do it. Hello and welcome, everyone. Welcome to episode two of the Learn to Code series that we're doing here. Uh, the, uh, hang on. For some reason, I, yeah, I had a, uh, I got a, I got a sub notification right at the beginning. Hey, welcome everybody. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, so uh, <clears throat> they're not supposed to be playing right now. It's supposed to be muted. Uh, but anyway, uh, welcome. Thanks for that sub, S&B. And uh, anyway, uh, greetings, everyone. If you are not uh, here on my stream, then I am talking, and I am not Bubs. And if you're on my stream, then I am actually Brendan, and the guy up there is Bubs. Uh, so welcome, everyone. <laughs> We are back. We're going to do the second episode. Last time we uh, started out learning a little bit about C Sharp. Uh, we did some basic things in a console application. Uh, we're going to do a little bit more console application stuff today and should be quite fun. Uh, if you are just showing up, you can watch from either my stream or Bubs' stream or I recommend both. Uh, we are both going to try to be in each other's chats so that we can uh, answer questions in either one as stuff comes up. Uh, so feel free to ask uh, questions as you like. Oh, I just realized, I could have just mentioned, uh, uh, Brendan's in the bottom left corner and Bubs is in the top right corner. And uh, <laughs> that is the case. <laughs> on both streams. Yes, on both streams. It, we keep the sync, man. <laughs> yeah, that was a good job on our part. Uh, and uh, if you are going to join both, I recommend you mute one of them. Otherwise, it's going to get weird. So anyway... Um, for anyone that doesn't know, I'm Brendan. I am a uh, professional software developer. I have been coding for a little over 20 years. Uh, I have uh, a degree in computer science, and I've worked for various different companies in the industry. And I will let people that don't know Bubs tell us a little bit about Bubs. Sure. So I am not a coder. Uh, I do not work in the industry. I am uh, uh, what we call noob, very noob. Uh, I think this is my second time ever coding. Is that correct? Because the only other time was with it was with you, so uh, second time ever. Uh, normally by trade during the day, I'm a recruiter. I work in talent acquisition. I work in human resources. I also stream uh, a lot of RPGs uh, and MMORPGs, so either World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy type games. So that's that's my hobby. That's what I like to do. Um, this is another thing that I've I've been taking up. Brendo, Brendan here has, been, has convinced me completely to uh, start coding, and uh, I, I love it. I've learned to to take an appreciation for it, so um, you know I, it, it's probably frustrating to watch me sometimes code, but uh, hang in there. I mean, you know, it's a second time ever, and uh, we're gonna have some fun and we're gonna learn some cool things today. Awesome, yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I will say I, I think it's an awesome thing for for people to learn just coding in general. Not like even if you don't intend to do a career out of it, uh, I think it changes the way you think about things. And Bubs, I think you're more entertaining to watch, uh, even when you struggle through things than you realize. Uh, the <laughs> professional developers, for example, like it's it's a new like because you're coming at it from a fre fresh perspective. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like we we take all this stuff for granted. Like, I mean the the basic things that I'm like, oh yeah yeah, you just do that. What do you what do you mean? You you, you mean you haven't been doing that for twenty years? It's like no, Bubs hasn't been doing that for twenty years. So this is a new concept. So. <laughs> Like, right, it's, exactly. it's pretty awesome. So, okay, cool. Uh, so welcome everybody that's shown up for, for these two streams. Uh, if you didn't see the first one, uh, you do not need to watch that stream in order to follow along with us. You can follow along either way. Um, we have a couple of things that we want to make sure that you get installed uh, in order to make sure that you can follow along with the stream. Uh, I linked to these in my chat and I will paste them as well over in Bubs' chat. Uh, so that people can see those. Uh, the things that you need to install are Visual Studio Code, and that is the first link that I sent out, and I will show that on my screen. Hopefully, Bubs will click the link and show it on his screen as well. Uh, so this is where it'll take you, and you just click the Download for Windows. That'll give you a standard installer. Uh, it's lightweight so it is not a very big download. So you can go ahead and download that. And this is a text editor that we're gonna use in order to write our code. Uh, the next thing that you need in order to follow along is the software development kit is what we call it. Uh, and that is, we, we usually say SDK. So it's the .NET Core SDK is the one that you need. So if you go down here and you say .NET Core SDK right there, 
that link will get you the tools that will let you run your C Sharp code. So one lets you edit it, the other one lets you actually like run C Sharp code. So to build it into a, a running program on your computer. Uh, that all made sense, right, Bubs? Indeed it did. Good. <laughs> you're 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 a good uh, barometer that I you know like did I did I a a good but, measure. Absolutely, it's quality check. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. If, if if you sounded like you didn't know what you were talking about, I'd tell you. But you yeah. did. You did, and it was cool. and it was well explained. <laughs> so once you install Visual Studio Code, that's the first link. You get this nice text editor that you should see on my screen and. Uh, once Bubs gets rid of that browser window, you'll see it on his screen as well. Uh, <laughs> and on this screen, what I want you to do once you have it installed is there's one step you need to take, and that is to click on this little square box looking thing. This is the extension. So Bubs, click over on the square box looking thing so everybody can see the extensions. And then you want to search for C and then a number sign. Maybe you call it a hashtag sign. Maybe you call it a sharp, uh, like music symbol. We usually call that C sharp. That's what they uh, call it in our uh, industry. You click on this one. It says C sharp. It's going to look like this. Hopefully Bubs clicks on it too. I can't tell. And uh, it'll be from Microsoft. That's how you know you got the right one. And uh, when you install this, this is going to help us code. So the idea with this, yeah, C pound, it's C pound. And um, that's essentially what we're going to use this for. Um, this lets us write C sharp with help. We like the help. And before you think that I, I got the help because bubs need the help, let me tell you, as a person has been programming in C sharp for how long have I been using C sharp uh, 13 years I still need this help we all need this help uh, it's really useful because it gives us all the autocomplete and stuff that we need okay so uh, quick explanation if you've ever seen uh, Google Docs that is essentially the type of collaboration that Mr. Bubs and I have uh, right now inside of VS Code you don't have to worry about that. If you're just programming on your own, you're not going to do that. But that's actually what's going to let me and Mr. Bubs work together in the same file. So, step one. We need to get ourselves uh, set up with a new project. So I'm going to ask uh, that, Bubs, can you open up your terminal? Uh, and the way you're going to do that is it should say you can either go up to View and you can go down to Terminal in the list. Or you can, uh, no, that's actually probably the best way. There's a keyboard shortcut that I use to open it, but here we go. So this is Bubs' uh, terminal. We can actually, the weird part is we can actually see this on our end. Um, <laughs> welcome to our collaboration tool. Uh, so Bubs, what I want you to do is we're going to start a new project. Uh, oh, one other thing I need to mention to everybody. Uh, step one, when you open up this program, go up to File, go to Open Folder, and pick the folder where you want to develop this code. So Bubs has chosen to put his in his F drive. Uh, he made a root directory called dev, and then he made episode 0-2. So yeah, it looks like that. And then you pick the one you want and you open it. So Bubs, go ahead and type into the terminal inside of VS Code and type in .NET, D-O-T-N-E-T, -E all one word. Yep, just like that, hit enter. And that gives us back a whole bunch of information. So. If you have everything installed right, you, you got the SDK and you have VS Code, when you run this, you should see uh, feedback like this, some kind of information just about the stuff you have installed. Uh, so now what I want you to do is say .NET, all one word, and then space new. Yep, just like that. And then this should come back with a different set of information. And this is the types of new things that we can create. So today, we're still going to do another console application, uh, which we can see the shortcut for is to just say console. Uh, but in a future episode, coming up soon, we're going to do one of these web ones. So that's probably going to be what's on our next one, but today we're going to be in a console application again. So go ahead and type .NET new and console, but this time, instead of typing that all out, just hit the up key. And now space console. So I don't know if you all could see that, but when he hit up, it automatically brought up the previous text that he'd typed. So that's a little 
just tip for any time you're in a command line, try hitting up, and it'll usually give you your previous command. Okay, so now that we have that, we've got our running program. So we should have it here. If you click on uh, program.cs there, bubs, everybody should be able to see uh, that we've got a, um, a simple little yep. text file. Hello world. And go ahead and do a .NET run inside of your uh, terminal as soon as it uh, gives you control back. And I notice it puts you on your output tab. So down on the bottom, you'll notice you have problems, output, debug, and console. Make sure you're in uh -huh. uh, debug console and terminal. Click on terminal in order to type every time. So there's a lot of information down on the bottom, but go to terminal and say .NET space run. Just like that, perfect. And this should say hello world. So hey, congratulations. Once again, I can say anybody that follows along up to this point, you are a programmer. Uh, not, not kidding, that is, you, you literally just wrote a program. All it does is say hello world, print it out to the terminal, but hey, that is something, so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and Will is so. Will just, uh, of course, he's 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 kidding. But uh, you did just create your first working, you know, a working program with no bugs, first try. Absolutely. Boom. So awesome. Done. Cool. So Bubs, uh, what do you remember from previous times uh, that we could put in here before I have you uh, do some other stuff? Mm. Let, let's let's test some of that memory. Do you remember? Uh, let, well, let's our, say we our, want to write out Hello World twice. The episode of this was well over a month ago. So like... Well over? No, it was not even a month ago. It was 29 days ago. Thank you very much. Okay, so it was almost a month ago. Yes. I don't remember what I had for breakfast. Okay, so so here we go, Bubs. Help me out of here. Make, make this write Hello World twice. Okay. Right, make it write it twice. Yeah, just twice. Just twice. However you want to. There are 100 ways to make it do it twice. Like in the terminal, uh, yeah, uh, but but change the change the program so it does it twice instead of saying hello world once. Hmm. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, console right. Uh, right line. Hello world. Uh, somewhere along the lines here, I'm I'm gonna put something to to, to make hey, it. Do and it Bubs, twice. you said you forgot what you had for breakfast. <laughs> if you'd have leftovers from your Italian dinner, you might have had some copy pasta. <laughs> Oh, I see what you're saying. There, there. There's a, I got got a hint for you there, buddy. Oh, you did. Yeah, wasn't that clever? Yeah, it was pretty clever. We I we like love the today. copy pasta. It's delicious. <laughs> and don't forget to add a semicolon on the end of the line. Uh, so that's just <laughs> for anyone that is is new here. Um, in C sharp, we we put a semicolon to say this is the end of the line. Uh, so that's just a way of saying hey, this logical line's done. Let's skip to the next one. Okay, yeah, copy pasta win. All right, go ahead and <laughs> .NET run it down there. Oh, we didn't save the file. Aha. Uh -huh. So go ahead and save the file. You can just do a Control S like Control you would S. in any program, and then yes. run it again. And what it should do is it should do a recompile and run it. There, there go. it goes. So it says hello world twice. Okay, so um, I'm going to make a quick modification here because I want to illustrate a point. So let's run this one more time. Uh, dang it, okay. Yep, you type it, .NET run, do it again. There you go. Okay, so what I wanted to illustrate there is that when you write code in, in pretty much, in most programming languages, um, and I'm not gonna get into the details, uh, some of the programmers in chat are gonna know what I'm saying that's not quite right here, but just remember, normally in a program, any any given block of code is going to execute in order. So we're going to run these these lines in order. So it's going to say line nine and then line ten, right? So this line executes, then that line executes. Mm -hmm. If we want to do something after those, we can do something down below. All right. So let's do this. Quick refresher. We want to be able to store this data. So go to line nine, around where my cursor is there, bubs, and uh, let's make a new variable. So uh, for this one, I just want you to type uh, VAR. So we're gonna create a new variable. Let's give it a name, so space, and then 
call it greeting, maybe? I like the name greeting. And then another space and then an equals sign. So what this does here is that says, hey, create a variable called greeting. We haven't told it what type that variable is yet, but it's gonna figure it out in a moment. Uh, hit another space and then put in your hello world message, including the quotes. Exactly like that, there you go. And then remember, end of the line, always get a semicolon. And inside of our console write line, instead of passing in uh, the, you know, the string literal hello world one there, pass in the greeting variable. Okay. Uh, sorry, what? <laughs> uh, do another console write line like we did okay. on line 10, but this time mm -hmm. pass in greeting instead of the string. So Can I do it like right under? Yep, sure wherever you like and so then type in uh, greeting instead yep. of the hello instead world. of the hello world so get rid of the double quotes yep Oop. open per yeah exactly I think you've got the idea there you go mm -hmm. so you were asking like before or after and uh, feel f on those kinds of things feel free to experiment with it a little bit because it really doesn't matter uh, and the cool thing about programming is that you can kind of find out. So save this, run it. Uh, so this is just, I wanted to re-familiarize you with variables. And for anybody else that's in the stream, they get to learn about them too. So it says hello world, just like the other one. So we've printed it out three times in the order that it's listed in our code. So the generic one first, followed by one and two. Okay. Um, so that's neat. Uh, we talked about a couple of other things we can do, like we talked about different looping mechanics. You might remember we talked about those. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Let's do a quick loop. So on line 11, let's go ahead and make a for loop. So, uh, so the way you want to do that, and this goes for anybody else uh, out there as well, type in the word for, so F-O-R, no, no, uh, four, uh, not not uh, not the number. Yep, <laughs> like there we golf, go. like four. No, oh, not okay. that one. Uh, and then right after you hit the the R, you should uh -huh. get a drop down, and you want to choose the one that pops out the second part and says it's got C sharp in it. There it is. Yep, and then hit Tab, and it should. Yeah, there you go. And Ooh. so it does this awesome snippet. So uh, if you were on my side, you didn't get to see what Bubs just did there. So I'll do one of my own so you can see it. Uh, we got this, and it pops out this little section over here. And then when you hit tab, it does this. So, <laughs> all right. So uh, Bubs, hit the tab key one time, and then type in a number, whatever number you like. 17 sounds good. Uh, and then cut line 15 and put it on line 13. What's this going to do, everyone? Any guesses? Bubs, you've got a guess. Is it going to loop it 17 times? Yes. Uh, so let's go ahead and save the file and run that. And we're going to see a lot of Hello World. <laughs> yes, we are. And the way it goes on the bottom. Hey, there it goes. That looks like 17 to me, probably. Yep. <laughs> I'm not actually going to count that. It. Yeah, it should. Okay, so cool. So we've got that set up. I'm going to make an adjustment to spacing here. So uh, we normally like indent like this because it shows, hey, that's definitely inside the for loop. So at a glance, you can tell what's in a for loop like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh <laughs> People in my chat said it only printed 16 and a half times. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, we write out that greeting, which is cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to do something else now. So this is kind of like a catch up, re-remembering some of this stuff we were doing last time so we can write stuff out. One of the neat things is that we were able to accept this information from the input. You remember we typed in that stuff. So 
We set our greeting equal to hello world, I want you to set it equal to something else. So instead of hello world, I want you to accept user input. So get rid of that whole double quote stuff there and say console.readline. So just to make this clear for you and everybody else, um, the, uh, the word console in this case is the same thing as terminal or command line or that kind of thing. So this says, hey, read a line off of the, the terminal, off the console. And write line means write one to the console. So that's, that's all that means there. Um, and when we do this, one thing I want to make sure you do, Bubs, because uh, this will help you. Um, when you type this, I want to show everybody what, what you'd see. If I start typing uh, read line, you'll see that it gives me this little IntelliSense thing. And if I hit tab, it will auto-complete it, and it fixed the casing for me automatically. So, Bubs, type that in and then hit tab. So type in read line and hit tab to make sure that you get, yeah. And then open parentheses. So when we take an action uh, in a programming language, we usually call that a, uh, when we, I, I should say, when we bundle up a set of actions into one thing, we usually call it a function or a method. And that's what this is that we're calling. So read line is a method. And every time we have one of those in C Sharp, we surround it with parentheses like this. Uh, so go ahead and put a semicolon on the end of that line. And let's run this code. Uh, save it first and then run it. Yep, mm -hmm. cool. So I'm gonna bring up the terminal so we can see it. So it's just sitting here right now. The code's not gonna finish. So notice it just put in this empty line here when you hit enter and you can see that little box. That's, that's the cursor there. Uh, so Mr. Bubs, type in something interesting. In the terminal? Uh, yeah, whatever, whatever you want to say to everybody. <laughs> oh, sweet. We're telling the truth now. <laughs> Clearly. I'm done lying. That's my Yeah, exactly. Really. All right, hit enter. <laughs> Let, let's see what this program does. Okay, hit enter. Yep. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, so it printed. Times. Yeah, we actually see it written 18 times. 17 of those were printed by the program, Eight, and then the, the first one was the one you typed in. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's pretty cool. So what that means is we can send input into our... Um... <laughs> Did you just pass yeah. over work? Yeah, no, I saw that. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, it really Trust doesn't. Me, I know. No, I'm good. Uh, okay, so console, read line, write line, and we get down here, and I want to do something more interesting with this. So I want to take in what you type and do something cool. So first off, let's give our user some instructions. So go up to that new line I created on line 10 up there, and mm -hmm. say console.write line, because when you got to that point, you had no idea what to do, right? Like, it's just, the program's just sitting there. It didn't tell you to type that in. Right. Okay, so let's put in a message and tell our user what to type in. So open parentheses and put in quotes, uh, parens. Don't forget the parens. Oh. Yep, there you go. Please uh, say anything. <laughs> sure, there you go. And then semicolon at the end of the line, and that should be able to run. Okay. And if, and if anyone's following along with us, you don't have to type the same stuff that Bubs does. Uh, like the text inside the strings, you can type whatever you want. You don't actually have to say that Brendan is the greatest dev ever. You <laughs> could say something like, Bubs is fun to watch, or uh, for the horde, for example. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, go ahead and run this program, and it should prompt you now for what to type in. All right, let's do the .NET run thing. Whoa. Yep. Please say anything. Ah, see, there we go. Ah, the X exclamation <laughs> points. That that did the trick. <laughs> and uh, people are totally right. No matter how good you are, you got to do uh, hello world. That's usually the place you start whenever you're learning a new language, even if you're already a professional developer. We all hello start world. with the basics. Yeah, hello world. Mm -hmm. Figuring out input output, those kinds of things in a language. Okay, so. Let's change up these instructions because we're going to do a new program. So that was kind of fun. We made our little greeting thing, right? It gets excited. It says it 17 times. 
So actually, let's a question, uh, yeah. Brandon. Sorry, it was a good question in our chat. This is actually really good because I guess you know we we do have a lot of gamers here, right? So they want to tie some of the things that we're learning um, into game development, I suppose. But this is actually a pretty good question. Is this actually how they make an NPC say something in game? How you would add a trigger for it uh, to like start a dialogue, for example? So normally they would not run that in a console application like we're doing here. Mm -hmm. Although it still is very similar to the way this works. Uh, if you were, say, writing a game, you usually have uh, a, it, it's essential, I'll call it, a, you have storage, you have a database full of information, which speaking of which, that's actually the plan for today. Um, you have all this, these lines of dialogue stored somewhere, uh, and that is essentially what they're pulling. So they grab data and they print it out somewhere. The fact that we're doing a console write line is special. What they're going to be doing is something else like, you know, um, they're going to be doing like a display message uh, to user or something like that, right? Or a display dialog box, right? Because in a lot of games, there's usually like a dialog box at the bottom of the screen, and that's where it displays to. Those same concepts apply whether you're calling console write line or whether you're calling, you know, display the message. So um, the chat bot, for example, that is in my chat room right now, uh, I apologize, I can't show this on Bubs' screen, so hopefully people are in both screens, are in both streams. Um, for example, if I want to send messages to the chat window there, I am actually calling a, whoops, I actually should have just done send message. So I am literally just calling the Twitch chat client and saying send message, saying which channel to send it in, and then I send through a variable of what text I'm trying to display. So these concepts that we're doing here, this applies whether or not we're writing to a console or whether we are writing to, um, say, the chat window in uh, Twitch or whether we are writing to whether we want to display text in a little dialog box inside of, say, uh, World of Warcraft, right? Hmm. So you have a chat with an NPC, they pop up some dialogue so that you can see what they're saying. The same concept. Uh, that dialogue is just coming from, uh, you know, a database or a file or something like that on your computer. Uh, or maybe it's calling out to an external uh, system to get that data. Does that make sense? Definitely. So yeah, that's that's why you can you can do console applications and be like, but I'm not going to write a console application in you know in the real world. Well, first off, uh, if you became a professional developer, there's a good chance you would write console applications on a regular basis to do little things for you. Uh, but mm -hmm. a lot of the coding principles stay the same, and this lets us focus on the code and less on um, you know the the UI. So okay. Uh, hopefully that answered the questions and console write line. Let's change up our message. Uh, and yes, we'll, uh, we, we will do something like that at some point also. Hmm. Uh, so, Bubs, change this text up here. What are we changing it to? Uh, so I thought an interesting, fun little thing, this is more programmer related than anything else, would be mm -hmm. to start us off with a little uh, converter tool. Uh, so let's say, um, let's ask the user to type in their favorite number. Okay, so remember I told you last time that mm -hmm. variables have type. So anytime you store anything, anytime you're dealing with data inside your program, it has a type. So for example, um, I'm just gonna change that there. We wrote the word var, but I can change mm -hmm. it to string. Okay, and you'll see that it says, uh, if you mouse over it, represents text as a sequence of you know, UTF-16 code units, don't worry about what that is. But essentially, mm -hmm. this is a string of text characters. So it's like words, like what we typed up here. That type in your favorite number, that's a string. When it was var before, if I moused over it, it would still say the same thing. It still says mm. it's a string. So essentially, if we wrote var, we're just telling the program, hey, use whatever it is, but if I want to specify it, I can specify it and have the word string in there. So that's what I'm going to do for now. And the reason I want to do that is I want to make clear what we're doing. So change the word greeting here to say uh, user input maybe. Uh, all one word. 
Got it. And let's capitalize the I so it's easy to tell that it's two words there, right? Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So notice that that's a string. A string is characters, it's text, right? It's not a number of any kind. So if we want to actually treat this like a number, what we might do is this. Uh, make a new line and let's make an integer. So hit tab so you're over on the same spot as the string and then say int. And that stands for integer. So you probably remember from math class, integers are whole numbers. Uh, so space, and then let's type this in as a name. Uh, let's give it the name number. So we're gonna create a variable called number and then assign that equal to something. So space equals. And now we're gonna get into a special set of methods that do some things for us. Um, let's say, uh, let's do it this way. We'll do int dot parse and do a capital P on that one. And then open parentheses and send in your user input. There you go. And semicolon at the end of the line. And then that should convert that to a number. So to confirm that this worked okay and didn't give us any errors, on line 15, uh, write out the variable number instead of greeting. So just change the word greeting to number. Yeah. Um, inside the parens there. Oh, inside the parens. Yeah, it. just that one. Cool. Okay, so looking at this, we write out a message. So here's our steps. Write out a message telling the user, hey, type in your favorite number. Store that input. So this is basically read the input, store it in this variable. This next line, and I saw a bunch of stuff in chat. This next line will take that, parse what was what it found in your message. So parse is just kind of like read some text and, and you know parse out information. So it means like get the information out of it, out mm -hmm. of text. So get the number information out of the user input and put that in a variable called number. Then we're gonna print it out, but this time as a number. So if you, if you notice, if you mouse over the word number, it says int number. So that's one of the cool things about it. Okay, let's go ahead, save this and run it. And it should be pretty easy. Uh, I don't know what you just did down there in the command line. <laughs> I pressed control S, but I guess I was in the terminal. Uh, try hitting escape down in that to get rid of it. Yep. There we go. Cool, I just guessed. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> yeah. I just hit control S to save and I was like, whoa, what is it? Let me see if it does that again, actually. As a matter of fact, it does. So if you hit control S in the terminal, that happens for some reason, it's a search. Yeah. Uh, so control save up here and dot run, dot net run. Yep, that is correct. <clears throat> Type in your favorite number. Cool, whoa. so 17 times it printed out the number seven. Uh, run it again, and this time type in something that is not a number. Unhandled exception. I'm an unhandled exception. Uh, yeah, so Mr. Bub's TV is an unhandled exception system format, <laughs> and it says the string was not in a correct format. So essentially what that means is you're not a number, Bubs. Mm -hmm. you're more than that to us you're way more That's than right. a number here thank goodness <laughs> <laughs> okay it's a simple integer i'd be really sad okay so cool so we don't do anything with it yet so let's do something with it mm -hmm. uh how about instead of printing out number print number plus i okay and what's that gonna do do you think uh Number plus an additional integer. Oh, uh, so what do you think is going to print? Let's say that. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, here, I, I saved it. Go ahead and run, and before you type in your number, guess what it's going to print. Um. So let's say you're going to type in your favorite number is four, right? Okay. So what do you think is going to print out? Hmm, I'm not sure. I mean, I know the answer to this one. Oh, but take take a so. guess, Bubs. Uh, 
Well, and people I'm want you to be number one, by the way. Code here, right? I'm looking at the lines of code here, right? And uh -huh. I see I here, and I see int I here equals zero. So okay. Yep. I feel like it's just it's going to add whatever this number is to it. So it's going to add I to four. Mm -hmm. And what is I right now? Zero. So it's just going to okay. be four anyway. It's going to be four. Right. The second time through this loop, what do you think I's value is? Uh, eight. Is it going to add it itself? Nope. Okay, so I will explain how the for loop works. And actually, let's let's look at the code. So run, let the code run. Hit enter, and we'll take a look, and then I'll explain. It'll make total sense then. So our numbers printed out is you typed the first four, and then we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it starts counting there. And the cool. reason it starts counting is because each time through this loop, we increase the value of i by 1. So that's actually how this loop works. So a quick explanation. We start this as zero. Then what right. we do, we increment it by one. And that's actually what this part here on the end does. This says uh, so increase so by one. That's I was one. wondering where, okay, that's where, that, and, and my chat was wondering the same thing too, because we're all noobs here. So yeah, like, no. why, was it, why was it only one if, if, if int i equals zero? You know what I mean? Uh-huh, yep. And so then over here we say, uh, until I, so as long as i is less than 17 keep doing this loop so that's why we do it 17 times is because we start at zero and then add one each time until we get up to the number 17 and then we leave before executing this line again so that's actually what the uh that that's actually what the loop is doing so it's actually pretty neat uh, okay. at least i think it's neat maybe you think it's neat no, it, it definitely is. See, seemed I like you thought. Yeah. I, I think I'm just still personally just trying to understand why it only went up one each time. Is it because of this that's typed out right here? Yeah. So let's let's write that differently. So that's let me let say. me change what it. Happens if you change it. Mm -hmm. So if I write that code instead, this might make more sense. Um, and if you run this, this is the same code. So go ahead and run that yeah. again, um, and it should do the exact same thing. So feel free to do four again if you like, so that we end on 20, and okay. we end on 20, right? We change mm -hmm. this code, and plus equals is a special operator in the programming language that says, add this value and then assign back to yourself. So that's actually why it does one, e so that's why it's doing one each time. It says, hey, take whatever the value of i is, add one and assign, and then assign it to itself again. So mm -hmm. let's do this. Let's change that to plus equals two. Save it okay. and uh, run it again. And then after you run this, and, and use the number four if you like. There it so goes. print it out a lot fewer times because we're going up by two. Um, it. Try, try changing it to three, run it again, and we should see even fewer times. But you'll notice it started counting by two, so it has only the even numbers. Ah, and so it's a 19. <laughs> four to seven to ten to thirteen so if you want to be able to count by some number you can actually easily do this mm -hmm. isn't that neat dragon talons ask will that work for any number put into that part of the code so we can get something outrageous <laughs> uh yes yes you can do absurd oh. things right so for example you could do like that right mm -hmm. and it would run the same it's going to run the same way take whatever number he's got and uh, start adding in numbers. Let's take a look. And we'll start with the number one this time. There it goes. And I guess the lines just get a little, a little bit less and less each time if we increase the number. Okay, so one thing I want to explain, because this is going to suddenly make sense to all of you. Have you ever heard of a programming language called C++, Bubs? C++, I have, have you heard of it? You've heard of it. I have. I've, heard, I've had heard of C++, but that's because I used to recruit for IT individuals. Okay, cool. But I mean, a lot of people have heard of some programming languages. Like, C++ yep. is a pretty well-known programming language. It's been around mm -hmm. for a long time now, many decades. Time, yeah. yeah. And you'll notice that we have I++ written here in our code. Good point. So this structure of doing like variable plus plus has actually been around 
for quite a long time in programming languages, that way of like increasing the value. Uh, Wheatlaw's trolling, by the way, everyone, uh, in my <laughs> chat. Uh, the number he's suggesting is, I believe, I, I didn't actually look, but I'm, I'm guessing that is one more than the maximum value that this integer can store. Um, <laughs> I think that, I, I assume that's what he's posting. Uh, so I++ means increase the value of I by one. So if you've ever heard of C++, the reason it's called that is because there's a language called C. Whoops. C is a language, mm -hmm. right? So C++, ah, if I can type correctly, is C, but a little bit better. So they increased the value of C by one. Get it? Uh, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when they made C sharp, uh, how's your musical uh, knowledge there, Mr. Bubs? Uh, that is a, uh, well, is this a sharp key on the piano, right? It's a black key. Yeah. So, so uh, but is it, yeah. what's a, what's a sharp? Like if you, so. Uh, minor. No, no. But, uh, but if yeah. something, if you take, uh, so, you know, you know, the basic scale, song. right? The musical scale, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Um, a, a sharp is, uh, like a, you know, like when, when you, when you do like F sharp, for example, right. Mm -hmm. Is that higher or lower than F? It's higher. It's higher. Oh mm -hmm. man. Did they totally say, Hey, it's like C, but higher level. <laughs> but like a half, like not a full note. No, 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 no. It, yeah. It's a, yeah. It's a, it's a higher level C. Gotcha. Does that make sense? So uh -huh. no, C sharp is a higher sense. level C language. So this is C. This is slightly cool. improved C. This is, you know, slightly increased value C. And this is higher level C. So that's mm -hmm. why these languages have, have these names. They were People were being clever with them. So that's what that, that C++ and I++, that was a programmer joke when they named that language, really. Well, uh, but, I'm asking, can it work with letters? Like, make it say the alphabet or something like that? Or uh, probably be yes, we altogether. can actually make it say letters. And the code is not actually any different, right. really. Super cool. Um, what do we want to do? Hang on. Uh, let me. Uh, I I could be wrong on that one. Um, let <laughs> Let's try this. Bubs, try running this. Sure. Um, and then add uh, and put in your favorite number is like sixty five or something. Whoa! I thought you were gonna say something else, man. Keep it clean. <laughs> oh no, those didn't. Uh, that didn't work right. Um. Oh, because we added the one afterwards. Sorry, that's my bad. Whoops. Uh, I might be forgetting something, too. Um, here, try running it one more time. Oops. Well, actually. Uh, yeah, you didn't want that number. Run it again, but this time type in <laughs> 65 as your favorite number. Yeah. But 65 is in my favorite number. Just this do it anyway. A hoax. Okay. Look at that. Oh, there it goes. Cool. Now, Bubs, aren't you impressed by the fact that I knew 65 is where the alphabet started in capital letters? Aren't you proud of me? I am. I am. I didn't... <laughs> so That's if good. you want to change uh, so that 17 to, say, mm -hmm. I don't know, like 26, uh -huh. and then try running that code again and picking 65 again, you're going to see something magical. Let's see. Uh, I want to see magic. Whoa. Oh, man. It's the alphabet. <laughs> the whole alphabet. I gotcha. Yeah, there you go. All 26. So. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, uh, you know, can I, can I... There's, there's some interesting comments here. Like Domson says, and if you add 32. Uh, yeah, I don't remember what that one's jump. Uh, I don't remember where the lowercase are, uh, but I'm sure Domson's telling us where the lowercase letters are or something like that. Could um, be. Uh, real quick, just want to thank Jack Jack Twenty One for the raid with the party of seven. I really appreciate it. This is very unconventional. I know probably people were expecting Final Fantasy, but I'm learning to code so I can make Square Enix great again. That's what's happening. <laughs> so you can make better Final Fantasy games in the future. That's that's the goal. Welcome, guys, and thank you, Jack, for the host. Yeah, so um, someone in, in, in my chat asked an interesting question about this code. 
uh, and that is a JavaScript developer that was wondering what line 7 is. Uh, and basically this is just the declaration of like the starting point of our program. So this is basically saying, hey, this is the main entry point of our code. This is a method declaration. Uh, it's actually, I should say, it's a static function declaration on our program class. So technically, in someone else's code, you could call this by saying program.main, and you could pass in your set of arguments like this. Um, so in theory, somewhere else in, in the .NET SDK that's running this code, it's doing this, and this is what calls our program, technically. But we don't actually call it that way. So uh, main is the name of the function. Uh, it's just, it's, that's, a, that's a standard thing. So uh, for anyone that is wondering, if you have, so program main, in a lot of programming languages, this or some equivalent of this is going to be the entry point into your code. Mm -hmm. So something like this. There's going to be one of these somewhere that is basically the thing that says, hey, start here. And <laughs> that's, that's basically it. Okay. And uh, thank you for that explanation there, Wheatlaw. That's perfect. So, okay, cool. Let's uh, let's do the next the next thing. So we were able to convert that to uh, a letter. So that's actually <laughs> funny thing. Someone someone asked that, and that was actually one of the things I wanted to do today. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is not this one. Uh, I want you to do something else with this number. Uh, okay. So let's go to line thirteen, where I just made us some new space there. Um, mm -hmm. Bubs, how much do you know about a computer? Uh, hardware, software, uh, programming. Uh, so in <laughs> inside of your inside of your computer, if I if I were to uh -huh. store this number, how's it stored? Do you know what like what format it's stored in, roughly speaking? I don't. Have you heard the term binary? Of course. Okay, cool. We're gonna print mm -hmm. out some binary. Uh, so. One one zero zero one one one. Uh, basically, yes. Uh, so <laughs> here's what I want you to do. I want you to type in the word string. Mm hmm. And then say space binary. And that's going to be our variable. So we're going to de declare a string of text that we're calling binary and mm -hmm. say space equals. Yep, perfect. You're, you're on top of this. I'm, st I'm starting, and then starting to, to pick up, man. Capital C, <laughs> convert. Convert. There you go. And then dot to string with a capital T. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, like two, like T O, not the number. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> Made sense because we're doing binary. You were you you were you were I, thinking I, right. I mean, everything's been integers and numbers. Yeah. And that's so then, open parentheses. Uh huh. Oh. And and I've got uh, mildly trolly questions over here. Uh, type in the <laughs> word number. And then comma two. Comma two. Yep. Okay. I think that'll work. If I'm remembering. Uh, so then go to the end of the line and add a semicolon. Okay. And so now I want what I want you to do is, so first off, I'm going to comment this out so we don't use it anymore. Sure. Uh, so it doesn't run. How go ahead and write so out. quickly, by the way? That, uh, was, that was magic. So here's what I did. I highlight, <laughs> highlight, a, so highlight all that text, bubs. Yeah, that was a, that was a neat little trick. That was a neat uh, skill. But, whoop, ju just these three lines. So. Okay. 15 and 18. Got it. Yep. Yep, and uh, the way you want to highlight those really quickly, click on the number 15 and then drag your cursor down to the number 18. Ah, uh, okay. There we go. See that? And now hit yep. control and then forward slash. Wow. There you go. Congratulations. Phenomenal. That's and so, uh, just so we're clear, so Bubs probably remembers this. Notice all that text went, well, you can't see it on my screen. Bubs, unhighlight. Uh, yep. Click somewhere else. So, yeah, so all that text went green. It no longer has all the nice formatting to show us all the different parts. This is called commented out code. Uh, and essentially that just means that this is a comment, a code comment. So we don't really run this. This is just here for information purposes. So I could say something like, you know, print message to user. Uh, and then I could say uh, convert to number. And these kinds of messages then are just for a future programmer to help understand what that is. But I'm going to leave those Indeed. out because Bub like, didn't. It's like it's like a secret between devs that we're not telling the program. It's a secret. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm getting rid of those because Bub's didn't type them. Uh, so, 
I, I'm mostly just doing spacing and stuff like that. Everything else has got to be bubs. He's he's the one that yeah. has has to learn this stuff. Okay, I so learn it. Uh, what I want you to do is print this out. Print out the string binary. I think you know how to do that, right? Um, right, write that to the terminal. Okay. You know how to do that. Uh, Bubs uh, console right line. Come on. Uh, okay. Uh, under or above it, because since since it does matter. Lines execute for... in order, right? Exactly. So, uh, under it, right? Yep. Because before that line, binary doesn't exist. Like the the okay. variable binary, right? Yep. Because we created on line thirteen. Mm hmm. So go ahead and uh, yeah, open parens, pass in the word binary, just like we did before. Okay. And a semicolon on the end of that line. And now, if we run this, what is it going to say? Let me fix your space in here. Oh, please, thank you. Sorry. And go ahead, yeah, go ahead and run it. Uh, I, I, I saved it for you. Okay. This is fun. Uh, right, so for this one, number. choose a big number this time. Like maybe 1,024. Okay. 2,086 is great. <laughs> and here we go. There you go. There's Whoa. 2,086 written in binary. Can we make the matrix? Uh, yeah, you could make the matrix if you like. <laughs> uh, hang on. Um, if you want to make the matrix, here's what I want you to do. Uh, okay. Let's bring back your for loop. Um, move that console right line into the for loop instead of your character thingy. Which console right line? Uh, bring your line 15, move it, and... Uh, uh -huh. Down in here, right next to that one. I'll make you a space. Let's okay. move it down to line 19 there. Or 18. Nope. Sure, you can kill your other one if you like. We don't need it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we, we didn't need Hopefully to print out don't. letters anyway. Okay. okay. So you're going to print this out. So you wanted to make the matrix, right? Yep. All right. So we called this this uh, this method here, this, this function, I should say, called right line. Mm -hmm. um, and what does it do? It uh, allows us to write something to the terminal. And it writes a line, right? Correct. What do you think this does if I did write instead of write line? Does so it give if, us a little more ability to write whatever we want? It doesn't give you a line. So that mm -hmm. means you just keep writing wherever you were. It does not create a new line. Nice. So get rid of the word That's line there. Okay. There you go. Okay, cool. Uh, so now what I want you to do is um, take that 26 and make that a lot, lot bigger. Um, 100K or a million? <laughs> hang on. Uh, let, let's let's go bigger. What's a million? Uh, higher than a million? Yeah. Uh, 10 million? Adding more zeros. Whoa! There we go, bubs. There's a good oh number. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, so now what I want you to do is uh, go ahead and run this program again and type in a very type in a nice big number again. Doesn't have, doesn't have to be a 2086 or anything like that. It could be something else. In the hundreds, thousands? Sure, any, anything big. Doesn't have to be as big as that number, but something okay. pretty good. So maybe like a, a, a 100,000 number or something like that. Oh, wow. Okay. And it doesn't really matter what it is. Sure. Lucky, lucky now, sevens, man. Now hit enter and be, dis be disturbed. <laughs> Ready? Yeah, go for it. Oh, my God. Welcome Morpheus to the Matrix. Fighting Neo. I knew it. Yeah. It's happening right now, live. <laughs> Here comes the kick. Oh, God. Neo just got hit in the face. Did you guys see that? <laughs> he's not ready. I don't think he's the one. <laughs> no, I don't think he is the one. Uh, so, <laughs> so the funny thing here is uh, that this code is, you know, like, clearly no one's going to write this. But what I want to kind of show is that you can sort of, like, you wanted to see the matrix. So it's like, oh, okay, yeah, we can kind of do that. Notice it's still awesome. writing down here on the bottom the whole time. This massive amount of pointless text. Um, 
I want to show you that you can kind of play around with things. So it does like, yeah, just bigger, bigger, you know, just increase the numbers. And if anything ever gets out of control, which this is kind of out of control, uh, go yeah. ahead and just hit hold control and hit the letter C. So same thing as a copy command in Windows. Uh-huh. There it goes. And so I always tell people to remember that as like cancel. And that's how you tell your program, hey, just go ahead and stop. So you make it go on forever until another input is put in. I I would assume so. Yes, you can, Sam. You can make it just run <laughs> run forever like that. Um, but we just did it as like a really big number. So it would have eventually stopped without us uh, getting involved. Mm -hmm. But um, it would take a while. Now, That's remember, fine. programs are really fast. If we didn't print out to the screen like like we were doing, it actually would have gone faster. So Seems printing like to the I screen is error. slow. It says the window is no longer responding. That's funny. <laughs> did uh, we break it? No, it should be fine. Uh, it says reopen, uh, keep waiting. Keep waiting. That was interesting. Yeah, keep waiting. It should be fine. I don't know. Like, okay. Win Windows should be working again, right? It is working. You can see my text here. Uh, actually, you know what? I think it's frozen. I think. Yeah, I can't click on anything. Oh, no. Well, we, 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 can, we can reopen that. That's easy. Okay. Uh, so just we'll just close Visual Studio Code oh, and reopen it. <laughs> that was a glitch in the matrix. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> close well, and reopen the, the terminal. The Actually, that's not a bad that's, idea. Yeah, it must be the agents. Either that or it was the lady in the red dress. Uh, uh, so uh, let, let's reopen. try. Yeah, okay. Yeah, just tell it to reopen. Yeah, let's see what it does. I don't know what it's going to do. Oh, man, you closed the session on me. That's not yeah, a problem. Well, I hit I hit reopen, so... Yeah, so down on the bottom, go ahead and start up a live share again. So click on yep. the live share button, and then send that to gotcha. me over in our messaging client again. Gotcha. And I'll have a new one to hop into. That was interesting. All right, no more Matrix Ma Matrix I, Matrix C. Yeah, we're not going to do that one again. But Matrix it is C's. still important to learn. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so I'm going to click on a link that is going to uh, bring me into this again. Uh, is it going to open a new window? It's going to open a new window, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so oh, it's yeah, it's connecting cool. me into that collaboration session. Uh -huh. uh, Wheat Law, well, I haven't looked at which one uh, Advent of Code Day 1 is. Um, I should have, because it might actually be something that Bubs could do. Um, mm -hmm. People, Some people made some cool things. Uh, make sure you open up your terminal at some point, Bubs, yep. just so that that's there. It's yeah, it's there. Okay, run the code. Uh, actually, let's change the code. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Let's change the code down to this. So uh, now you should be able to run the code. Let's try. Because I made it only run ten times, right? Mm-hmm. Type in your favorite number. Let's pick a small one. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Cool. Uh. That's funny. I actually expected it to write more than that. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, not a huge deal. Uh, I guess it must have must have shortened that. So let's pull this out of here because we don't actually want to do that in the loop anymore. Because uh, more interesting was converting to binary. Right. Right. Okay, so you can write. Uh, Favorite. Let me let me see base ten number. So I want you to do something. Uh, I want you to copy from this line down to this line, and then paste it down below that. So you'll have two copies of this. Okay. All right. So notice we have some red underlines. We do. Okay. So if you put your cursor over them, it says a local variable or function named what it, whichever one you put your cursor over is already mm -hmm. defined in this scope, yeah, right? So we've used, utilized it. So already. we already we already declared user input, which means we can't mm -hmm. declare it again. Now notice that we use user input without using without typing the word string. So if you yeah. want to use a variable, you don't have to say the type, but if you want to declare one, you do. So in C sharp, if you delete that that second word string that I highlighted there, mm -hmm. that red squiggle will go away. 
So we don't normally, in, in most programs, when, when we talk to professional developers and we try to get them doing things like the right way, we try not to, you know, reuse variables too much because it can get dangerous because we can make mistakes with them. Uh, but this is just some sample code, so we won't worry too much about that. Uh, and now I want you to do something else. Um, uh, do we need this? Yeah, we need that one. Um, so we grab our user input from our user. Uh, let me do that. So you've heard of binary, right? We said, mm -hmm. and do you know that that is also called base two? I don't. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna explain a tiny bit of math. Um, don't worry, don't worry everybody, don't be scared. Tiny bit of math. Uh, and and the viewers just drop. Math, yeah, I know, right? Here. Math, nope, <laughs> gone. Uh, yeah. So binary, that ones and zeros, that's called base two. And the reason why is because it's a numbering system where any given digit only has two options, zero mm -hmm. and one, right? That's two options, zero or one. In base 10, you have the options zero, one, two, three, all the way up to nine, right? You have zero through nine. And right. base 10 is the numbering system that we humans use. Uh, I will give you one one guess as I wiggle my my fingers in front of my camera why we use base ten in most modern cultures on Earth. You get you get one guess, everyone. One 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 guess. Can I guess? Can I guess two? Yeah, Bubs. What's your guess? Is it because it's easy when things are in base ten? Like no, uh, actually, it's uh, see, we we uh, Wheatlaw and Will are correct. Uh, it is because we have 10 toes. Huh. No, actually, uh, so 10 fingers makes like easy and obvious counting, so that's why humans use base 10 numbering. Uh, obviously, if we had six-fingered fingered hands, we'd probably use base 12 numbering and would be better at math because of it. And I'm it's not because kidding. because of the metric system? Is it, is, was, that a, was that a Pulp Fiction reference? No, actually, it wasn't, but the metric system is actually the, the reason why metric system is base 10 is because we use a base 10 numbering system. Right. So... They look at uh, the big brains on Greendolph. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Greendolph doesn't sound anything like Brad. Now look at the no. look at the big brain on Bubs. Brad. That actually works. <laughs> See? Okay, yeah. so here's what I want to do. I want you to type in your favorite base two number. So now that means give us a binary number. We're gonna store that in this string, right? User input, or you'll recall is a string. We declared it up mm -hmm. here. Yes. And then we want to convert that back to a decimal number. So we're going to convert that the other way. So here's what I want you to do. Let me delete these so they don't confuse us. Got it. So on line 20, go ahead and declare a, or actually just use the variable uh, number on line 20. We're going to okay. reassign it. So on line 20, just say, no, oh, just, just reassign number. No, no var, just say number. Got it. Yep, there you go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say convert dot to capital T. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be uh, on only one O. Uh. And then say capital I N T. Capital I N T. Oh, space I N T. Whoa. No. Yeah, I tried to autocomplete on you. Yeah. And you should see one of your options listed as int32. Choose that one mm -hmm. and hit tab. Okay. There you go. And then open parentheses. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you should get a little bit of IntelliSense help that's telling you what to do here. But put in the word user input. And then put a comma. And then put a space and a two. The number two. <laughs> yep, like that. So it looks Got the it. same as line 13. Okay. And then add a semicolon to the end. And if I didn't tell you anything wrong, go to line 22 and change from the word binary to the word number in there. The number in there? Yeah, the, yeah, I know. I know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then the other thing, let me get these for you. We're going to change these from rights to right line. Okay. Save that and go ahead and run this code. Let's see it go. Um, and actually, go. let me make sure everybody can still see that code a little bit on my screen. There we go. So oh. we 
lost a curly brace, I think. Whoops. Be my guess. Yep, we lost a curly brace. All right, try it again. So notice it said expected a curly brace. I just added in a curly brace for you. That's actually gotcha. what that said. See, it's like expected a curly brace, and then it showed a red squiggly down here. And mm -hmm. basically that just meant it was expecting one more curly brace than we had. I see. So these line up. So notice there's a beginning and end one there, beginning and end one there. So namespace class and the method each have one. Okay, so type in your face favorite base 10 number. Could be anything, like say 17. Okay, 17. All right, let's hit enter. See what we get. Cool. Ten, so we got one. one. <laughs> uh, yeah, one zero 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 one. All right, so let's type in your favorite base 2 number. So type in a, a binary number. So just ones and zeros. <laughs> one. Because it's more than zero. Uh, yeah, it was one, bubs. All right, run that run that again, but with something that that's more interesting than that. <laughs> Got it. Um, I will wait. I'll get to do ten first. So I'll go back to seventeen, and then like that. Sure. Yeah. Go for it. I don't know what that number is. Apparently, you typed in seventy-seven. <laughs> how? What do, what do you mean how? You actually, I mean, I can explain binary. That wasn't really the point. <laughs> no, it's fine. Okay, so that's just some basic stuff. I wanted to do a little bit with this so you could just kind of see, like, yeah, there's some basic things that, that you can program here. Oh, two people in two different chats said Lucky Sevens. Correct. Some Final Fantasy fans in here. Uh, yeah, yeah, Lucky Sevens. There you go. Yeah. We did. I did. Typed in something randomly. I got Lucky Sevens. I never get that lucky. <laughs> okay. Um... So, uh, Sunzuki, you are wondering what program we are teaching him to write. Right now, we're just sort of um, teaching some basics of programming, programming concepts, some, some simple things like that. We thought it'd be a little fun to mess around with numbers and things like that today, so hence we're doing a little bit with binary. Uh, we jumped ahead and did the characters because someone asked about it, because uh, that was actually what we were going to do right after we did binary. Hmm. Uh, so, the next thing that I wanted to talk about, so that that's kind of cool, isn't it, Bubs? You can... You know, you can see you can convert cool. convert from this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of neat. And, te and technically, you could change to other bases, too, if you wanted. So, for example... Um, oh, Bubs, you know this. You've played Final Fantasy VII. Oh, I have. Uh, yeah, so in <laughs> Final Fantasy VII... So this is going to be information for anybody else that's in here uh, that mm -hmm. hasn't played it. Uh, you can customize the text box windows uh, based on colors. Yes. What is the maximum color number for any given color that you can use, Mr. Bubs? Oh my god, it's two something? 200 and something, I think? Uh, 255. Run 25. your program again. Mm -hmm. uh, run, with run that this, number? Yeah. Type in that as your favorite base 10 number. And watch what happens. All ones. Do you understand now why that's the maximum? Yeah, I do. Because they were storing eight bits of data for that color. So that's gosh, why that is awesome. it's 255. <laughs> so you get zero to 255. So I will never look at that option in the video game the same again. All right, so here's what I want you to do. Type in one followed by eight zeros as your favorite binary number. Okay. All right. Hit enter. And there's 256. Oh, 256. See? So essentially, we increased by we increased by one, and we got to two two fifty six. So Very makes neat. sense, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so that actually works pretty well, and we've got that going. So I, I just thought I'd mention that because it's kind of a cool little thing. Because that's actually, you know, that's like a little bit of understanding when you see those kinds of limitations uh, right. on things. That's actually why they are. Uh, have you ever noticed how, like, um, amounts of memory and, and things like that are weird numbers? You know, like, you know, 512 and 256, you know, like, you remember the... 256, 512, like, what is it, 1028? Yeah, so those are all oh the binary, God. those are all the round binary numbers. That so notice so 256 is, is that. <laughs> but if you did one followed by nine zeros instead of eight zeros, mm -hmm. that would be 512. 
10 and then that's what 10 it is. 10 24 is one followed by 10 zeros. Yep. And so that's why you get all these weird numbers in programming is your computer's not working in decimal. It's not in base 10. It is in binary. And so that's why you get some of that weird stuff like those numbers that it's like, that's not a round number. It's like, yeah, it is in that numbering system. So you're just uh, using a different quick, one. Uh, Brendonius, if you yeah. want, because uh, it's been an hour or so now, I'm sure you've gotten follows. I've gotten follows. If you want to give any shout outs right now. Uh, sure. I can look through the list. Uh, three micro. Thanks for that follow. Uh, mm -hmm. lucky number seven. Thanks for the, um, Twitch prime sub. Although I didn't see how many, uh, that, that was a, I think it was a resub. Uh, lucky number sevens. I'm jealous. Oh yeah. Yeah. Lucky number seven. He's got a, he's, he's pretty <laughs> awesome. That's great. Uh, full Fultima, full Tima, Domson, Jake, Bob, uh, Juggernaut Dude, uh, Q Macro 99, Shub 688, Hannibal uh, Left Control, I'm guessing. Uh, thank you all for those follows. Greatly appreciated. And uh, thank you whoever hit the hype and the derp there yeah. on, my, on my side. I don't know if you guys saw that. Bubs, go ahead and do your thanks for stuff. Certainly. Uh, Dragon Talents, thank you for the host earlier. Jack21, thank you for the raid. Mo Fire Lizard, thank you so much for the follow. RB Hitman, thank you for the follow. And Pat Lehman, thank you so much for the follow as well. I appreciate it, guys. And uh, one, one just showed up right now. Um, oh, so go. welcome, uh, the real sea bag. And uh, Martin does stuff. Hey, greetings. <laughs> that is someone that is. Uh, doesn't usually talk much in my chat, but uh, always nice when people uh, when people do say hi. And, Absolutely. Uh, hey, Green Doll, thanks for the uh, seven month resub. Seven months in a row. That is awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Hype, hype. I got a like dinosaur sub badge. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah I know. In the dinosaur, I love our little <laughs> Chatosaurus. I love the Chatosaurus. It's great. Yeah. Okay, so I will tell you if I ever if I ever do get partner bubs. Um, it's funny. People are like, why do you care about partner? I'm like, because I want cool emotes. <laughs> <laughs> really? The, I feel like that's, that's mainly the thing too. I don't, I don't like how, how affiliates only get like three. Like, I, just, I know I everybody get more emotes. I think, you know, that's the thing that kills me. I'm, I kind of sit there. I'm like, why don't they just give like a tier one sub three emotes by default for affiliates? Right. And then I mean, like but, one like, for each of the other emojis, tiers. Emotes and emojis for like every social media platform is so standard. You know what I mean? Like, like limiting it to three is so cringe. I hate it. Uh, also, um, Greendorf, uh mentioned the other reason why uh, I want to have partner, and that is that on, on Twitch, if you're a partner, they always give you the uh, controls to adjust the settings on your stream. So mm. people can, like, you know, if you're on a slower internet speed at some point, they can drop the quality of your stream down to, like, 480 or something like that. Um, obviously yeah. running 1080p on a phone, uh, is, you know, if you, if you don't have unlimited data is going to kill your data out of the things like that. So, uh, right. or if you're just on not a great internet connection. So yeah, uh, some nice stuff there. Mm -hmm. Uh, so cool. Uh, let's jump back into some coding then if you're good Absolutely. with that. Oh, uh, someone has a question. Uh, what does the int dot parse do? And, uh, no problem at all Hannibal and Hey Crimson, welcome. Crimson. Wheat, Wheat will answer the question for me. It converts a string to an integer. It is one way of doing that. I did it in two ways in this code uh, because I wanted you guys to see this one because you will run into int.parse all the time in C sharp. This is very common. I We could have done this. Number equals convert dot to int 32 and passed in user input. And you'll see that, that that would actually do the exact same thing that this one does. So they're gonna work the same way, except most of the time I think you'll see line 12 uh, instead of line 11. Um, but that's not, not always the case. You could see either one. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear. Uh, parse is basically the a word that just means you know to find the information from to to get the information out of the text 
Uh, and Wheatlaw mentioned there in chat that there's all kinds of parses. So uh, if we wanted to parse out a date time that you typed in, for example, we would do date time dot parse. And uh, if I type in like 2018, 12, mm -hmm. 6, right? That is going to get me back uh, today equals that, right? And so this line is going to put a variable that has today in there. So I wasn't planning on doing stuff with date time, but I figured it explained because someone asked how the parse worked. And there's usually a parse for a lot of the, the basic data types that you're going to work with. Okay, so... That's where we're codes back to the way it was. Um, uh, Cal Raven, the only reason we used parse instead of try parse in this case is just for the simplicity, and I'm not planning on doing much defensive coding uh, while we're you know just teaching uh, beginners how to code. So hopefully everybody's uh, not having any trouble following along. Uh, I guess this is a good time to mention if you do want to follow along. Uh, feel free to hang out uh, today, but you can re-watch and follow along if you weren't here at the beginning. Uh, and I do explain how to get set up with all the tools at the beginning of the stream so you can follow along with us. Um, uh, or when you want your application to be... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, what we love... So here's the challenge. If, if we type in a number that's not an integer and we call int.parse, the program's actually gonna, going to crash. Uh, so the only time you really want to call int.parse is if you know 100% that it is definitely always an integer, which you only do if you are in control of uh, that code. So uh, in this case, normally we would write a try parse, but that's a little weird in the way that it works. So mm -hmm. hence, I don't really want to get into how uh, those actually work because they, they're a little different. Nope, uh, CalRaven, if you know how an int try parse works, go ahead and use that. It is better. <laughs> this is just, this is, we're, we're more teaching the programming concepts than which is the actual preferred method within the language to do a thing, if that makes sense. Okay, so, uh, Bubs, on to our next bit of coding. Let's uh, go. So, step one, let's save okay. this. So I want to save this, so I want to teach you how to make a method. So go ahead and hit enter uh, right where your cursor is a bunch of times. Right where my cursor is? Yep. Uh, 23. Boom. Sure. Boom. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to type in uh, static void. Whoa. That sounds epic. <laughs> uh, yeah. It totally is. <laughs> oh, uh, space. Yep. Me? There you go. And then I want you to say... Um, what did, what did we do? What is this code doing? Um, say, have fun with a binary. Capital H, and then capital F, capital W, and capital B. Have fun with binary. Okay. And get rid of those spaces between those, because that's all one word. And essentially what we're going to do here, and say open close parentheses on the end of the line, Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, uh, open up. Open, uh, close like that. Yep. And mm -hmm. then hit enter and open curly and then close curly. That's hey, braces. Uh, no, 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 no. Leave, leave that closed. Der, 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 der. All kinds of derp. Hold on. Okay. Uh, but semicolon at the end of this now. Nope. No. Trust me. Whoa. Curly That's brace. That's why I was confused. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Curly braces, uh, sorry. Curlies, uh -huh. yep, there you go, hit enter again. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go, hang on, let me fix your spacing, like that. Let me get rid of these lines, I that, see. whoops, down here. Okay, so now, take a look at line seven, and take a look okay. at line 24. Right. Those look similar, don't they? They do, it seems like we're starting something new, almost. Yeah, so this is called a, um, uh, We'll say a function because it's a little more clear. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I want you to do is put, click your cursor on line 9, drag your cursor all the way down to line 22 while still holding it down, and let go so you highlight all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then go ahead and cut all that. Boom. And then click on the number 13. Paste it there. And then paste it right there. Boom. Okay. 
Mm. So now all that code has been moved out of the main method and into the have fun with binary method. Got it. Now go ahead and go into the main method where I just put, created that new line 9. And I want you to mm -hmm. type in have fun with binary and then an open and close parentheses. And curly brace. Or, uh, uh, semicolon, yeah. Yeah, sorry, semicolon. You did the right thing. I said the wrong words. You are correct. <laughs> They're confusing me. No. Sorry. <laughs> All right, run the code again. Let's see if it still works. Should work. Okay. Should. Yeah, yeah, I think it will. Look, it's always should. You never know when you made some little <laughs> syntax error somewhere, bubs. Type All right, type in your favorite uh, uh, base 10 number, which, remember, is 10,024, right? No. Uh, it's not? Okay. <laughs> what is it? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Let's do 1024. Ke kebab taste case. <laughs> <laughs> It's a camel line. Okay, we did 1024. And our favorite base 2 number. There you go. So that's one followed by 10 zeros. I didn't count those. I just happen to know that one. Uh, so what's your favorite base 2 number? Hmm. I like 77 again. Uh, try try uh, actually four sevens. Because that actually is what lucky number sevens does in uh, Final Fantasy VII in terms of damage, Correct. right? Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, here we go. Boom. Whoa. Unrecognizable digits. Did we hit a space or something? We Did might I? have. Let's try this again. I'm I'm guessing we uh, we had a format thing. Uh, maybe. Uh, oh, are you talking about up up in the actual code that I hit a space somewhere? No, or no. I think it was that down there. Just hit this and then uh, try that again. Give me my fat fingers. It happens. No, no, no. We bombed. We bombed. Uh oh, right. We're supposed to type in a binary number. Derp. We're dumb. <laughs> I'm not dumb. You're dumb. This, this is my yeah. second day doing this. <laughs> yeah, no. And we didn't read our own instructions. So that no, was that didn't. was supposed to convert from binary into decimal. We did that backwards. <laughs> we just derped that. Thanks, Wheat Law, for the derp in there. Yeah, I needed a derp on that. Uh, oh, derp's yeah. not on. Oh. oh, no blast derps. Yeah, hang on. Let me turn it back on. <laughs> I'm assuming I just need to refresh the page or something. I don't Certainly. know. I, I can't see the I can't see any errors on that and it doesn't actually recover all that well. <laughs> derp, please. Derp, blurp, blast, derp, 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 blurp. Yeah, here we go. Uh, there we go. Uh, so code code still won't runs. We're just dumb. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. Um, we're gonna leave that like that. Okay. Because code still runs, we just got rid of that. So let's write a new let's write a new function. So copy line fourteen uh, and put it above line fourteen so that we can work with that more easily. Sure. Hang on, everybody in my chat. I'm just gonna click a couple of buttons. Don't worry about that. I put it directly above thirteen. Is that fine? Yep. And I'm gonna do that. Get you some okay. new curly some braces. Squig squigglies. Let's change this name. So okay, let's call this um, have fun with files. Ooh. So, Sounds like a blast. Yeah, we're going to have fun with files. And uh, all the <laughs> JavaScript people in the room are going to laugh, too. Anybody in here that actually knows JavaScript already? Derp is derped. Did I say function? Uh, yeah, I, I called it a function because it's static. So it's it is a method, but it's kind of like a function so mm -hmm. um the programming people are freaking out because i'm using those words interchangeably overwrite the curly braces to be square no. brackets no no, no we're <laughs> not gonna do that okay so bubs <laughs> guess what i want you to do on line 10 what do I, what do you want me to do on line 10 what did we do on line 11 we uh i don't know you cheated well, when it's not commented out, what did, what did it do? <laughs> oh, damn it. What did I do here? That's not the command I, don't, I wanted. I don't know what you did. <laughs> All right, so on, on re line 10. I was trying to reveal the secret you made here. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> yeah. It's see what you did there. In oh, control forward slash. But anyway, go ahead on line yeah. 10, write in have fun with files. Okay. Okay. And then open and close parentheses and then a semicolon. So this mm -hmm. is calling that method that you wrote, the function that you wrote. Okay. 
So have fun with files is the code down here. So what I want you to do is down on line 16, so before we actually write the real code that does stuff with files, I want mm -hmm. you to do console write line hello world. So the same thing that we did at the beginning. Oop, uh, line. Yep, you got this. And then a semicolon at the end of the line. And now here's what I want you to do. Line, duplicate line 10. Okay. It's a function. <laughs> And where do I put it? Just right there. Just duplicate it twice right there. I did. but there's That's this once, thing. but paste it again. Just paste duplicate it again. It like, yeah. like right under it? Yeah, right. yeah, just duplicate it right there. Whoa, that's weird to me. <laughs> Technically, that was going to work, but I'm going to go ahead and hit enter for you because I'm nice. Okay. <laughs> I'm just uh, I'm following your direction, okay. man. R run this code. Let's see what Let's happens. What do you think is going to happen? I have no idea, dude. Something about hello world and it's gonna. So what do you? What do you, Let's take a look at the code. Okay. Run, run, run it, and uh, let's see what happens. Right. Let's just run it. Yeah, we'll we'll see what happens in a second, and then I think it'll make sense. Okay, said so hello world twice. Right. Uh -huh. So on line ten, here, here's what happened in our code. So this requires a little bit of explanation because we're going to explain functions and then we're going to immediately start using files too. So we're going to do two two pretty big concepts for for all the beginners in here. Um, so have fun with files is a function or a method. Either either word is fine. That's what we call this right here. So this is a declared uh, static method on our program class. Mm -hmm. So this says how to have fun with files, right? Which is not a great name for it, but don't worry about that. And essentially what it does, when we call this, our program is... So when we call our program, we execute line 8, there's nothing here. We execute line 9, there's nothing here. We mm -hmm. execute line 10. Line 10 mm -hmm. says, hey, go, go run fun with files. So we come down here, we execute this, 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 and this. And then we mm -hmm. come back up to the end of line 10, and we execute line 11, and it says, oh, run the have fun with files function. So we come down here, and we execute this again. Does that make sense? It does. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to make sure that my explanation was clear there. So then when it <laughs> finishes this, we come back here to the end of line 11, we continue on to line 12, there's nothing to execute on line 13, and then your program ends. So that's why it prints out hello world twice when you run it. Mm-hmm. So gotcha. that's all it's doing. Pretty pretty, uh, pretty nice because it lets you save up like um, the same thing. If you want to do the same thing multiple times, you can store that code in a method. And this mm -hmm. is like, you know, hey, I wrote a way of doing this and I want to do it. I want to be able to do it over and over again. So this is how I do that. Uh, so we don't want to, I just want to explain what the function is. It's a way of reusing it. So I'm going to delete our extra call to it. We only actually want to call it once. So mm -hmm. when you only call it once, this is more of a way of organizing as right. opposed to allowing reuse. So, whoops, sorry, everybody. So this lets us define and essentially name what this does. So let's actually have fun with files. Okay. Uh, so step one. Uh, Brendan's gonna add in a thingy at the top. A thingy. So I'm gonna add this up at the what top. What is this sorcery? So using system.io. So if you followed my cursor up to the top of the file, you should see I just added this. I did. Right mm -hmm. here. You probably never saw Bub's ad using system before, but he did that. Fairly certain it was him and not me. But, mm -hmm. Um. Sure. Yeah, you don't remember doing it, but you did. I did. System I.O. is also one that we want to have, and this is what lets us use files. Um, so, first off, uh, let's just try writing a file um, using System I.O. Uh, so, in here, Let's just mm -hmm. do this new line at fun with files and just say capital F f for file. And then I think you want to say dot write. 
And is that uh, auto completing? Is that like showing stuff for you? Uh, write all bytes, write all lines. Yeah. Uh, uh, there should just be a write. Let me let me confirm that I got this. Uh, so let me just do my own because I want to see what you're seeing. Um, write all text. That's the one we want. Okay. So we'll use that one, and let me confirm what's in it. Path and then contents. Okay. Just have to remember, and the IntelliSense helps. So go ahead and type in file dot write all write all text. Okay. Okay. Um, and open parentheses. Mm -hmm. And now I want you to type in. Now this is this is complicated. Um, <laughs> inside a double quotes, hello world. It wasn't complicated. That was a joke. <laughs> But good job, um, all the I, same. You, you did get my brain like prepared for something, so I, was, right. I, I probably so, use more cells than I needed to. Now, at the beginning, uh, at the beginning, right, 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 uh -huh. right around where my cursor is. Okay. Go ahead and put your cursor, and say uh, inside of quotes, which I think it'll help you do. Yeah. Okay. Say greeting dot txt, and then between the two double quotes there, put a comma. And at the end of the line, put a semicolon. Okay. And hopefully, I didn't mess that up. I don't think so. Looks like there's two different greetings here, though. Uh, no, no. One one of them's a file name, and one of them is a greeting. Ah, oh, makes sense. Okay, so let me mess with spacing. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of that for you, also. Okay, let's go ahead and I think I saved it. So go ahead and run this file. I can run this program, yeah, down at run. And now what I want you to do is type in, uh, oh, actually, look look here on the left. Something.txt. No, not that one. <laughs> Greeting.txt. <laughs> Greeting.txt on top, yep. What's in there? Let's find out. Nothing. Oh, hello world, actually. <gasps> Whoa! You just wrote into a file. Congratulations. Sweet. You're now a uh, like programmer that can write to files if you want. Is that is that what so file dot write all text? That's what we did, right? So if I were to change hello world next to greeting text, it would change it. What do you mean? Uh, so on line seventeen, right? I'm assuming that the reason why hello world popped up in here is because the thing next to it says hello world next Correct. to greeting text. Right. Change so this change text. That, yeah, right. change that text. Yes, he's a hacker creating random files on his own computer. Boom. All right, save that, run it again. And let's see if we get an error. I don't remember if we're getting an error or not. I don't think we will. Did you save it? it? Okay. I did. We'll see if we get yelled at or not. Oh, we didn't. Let's open up greeting.txt. Hello, Twitch chat. Hey, hey. Oh, my. So we can God. we can write out uh, whatever we he want, essentially. Now. Man. Thanks, Wyatt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now Hacker Man. Yeah, that's the idea. That's the idea. Also, hey Rex, welcome. Hey. I just noticed Rex is here. I, I cool. I love Rex. Yeah, Rex is a good guy. You should steal your own identity, bubs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so that is basically how to write write to a file. Now you noticed something when you were doing this. Um, mm -hmm. You noticed the other options. I just want everybody to see on my side also that write all lines was another option. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and change that to write all lines instead. Lines. Okay. Okay. So now notice when you did that, the, the right hand parameter, the right hand argument, the hello Twitch chat got a red squiggly underline. Yep. Uh, it's basically telling us here that a string is not the type it's expecting. It actually wants a list of strings. Now we talked about this in, a, in our previous episode also. So here's what I want you to do on line 17 that I just created there. Go ahead and type in uh, list less than, capital L, list less than, and then the word string, lowercase s. Uh -huh. Greater than. 
and then a space lines, and then equals. Like that? Yep, and then say new, space, and then list less than string greater than, the same way we did at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then at the end of that line, open and close parentheses. Um, okay. Just like that, perfect. Uh, then a semicolon, and then put the word lines in place of the highlighted thing I just the thing I just highlighted there. Okay, my guess is that whatever I put in the terminal is going to save it to the text file. Uh, no, not exactly. Hmm. Okay, so we have some red squigglies, and I want to uh -huh. explain these red squigglies. So we're trying to use list, and if you put your cursor over it. It's going to okay. say the type or namespace list less than greater than could not be found. Are you missing a using directive or an assembly reference? And the mm. answer to that is yes, we are. So you'll remember before we used the file word, I added this up to the top, the system.io. Mm -hmm. There's another one we can use, but instead of typing it, I want you to do this. Put your cursor. Uh, I think you can put it where I just did. Oops, hang on. Will it figure this out? Yes, it will. Put your cursor where mine is right now, the new spot where mine is, right at the okay. end of the word list. Yep, there you go. Now hold the control key and hit the dot key. And a little thing should pop up for you. Okay. And when it does, you should see using system collections generic. Go ahead and click Correct. on that or hit tab either way. Got it. Cool. Now look up at the top of the screen. If you scroll up to the top of the file. Whoa. It yeah. added in using system collections generic for you. So the <laughs> cool thing is, remember I told you in the beginning of this that uh, when, when we were installing stuff, I said, hey, even the professional developers use like the C-sharp extension, things like that, because it really helps us, because uh -huh. it does work for us. That's the tooling doing work for us. Mm. So we didn't have to add that to the top. We're just like, hey, I want to use lists. It's like, oh, in order to use lists, you have to, you know, put this at the top. And so we do. I'm not going to explain really what those usings are other than to say that's what lets you use extra external code. Right. So, yep, yeah, very, very cool stuff. <laughs> Someone says, uh, so Boxy Baby's saying, I don't remember the last time I ever manually added a using. Uh, I know when I last used one because uh, I've used some of those websites where you can, uh, yeah, I did it in this vid too. Uh, but I'm, I'm also teaching someone. But yes, I we don't usually have to type those. Uh, so that's the nice part. Okay, so we want to actually put something in here. So mm -hmm. here's what I want you to do. I want you to say line, uh, on this spot that I just added here, say lines.add, lowercase l, yeah, okay, got it, and capital A mm -hmm. on add, there you go, and then open parentheses. And what do you want the first line of your text file to be? Um, I could have it whatever I want. Yeah, put it, in, put it in quotes and then just type in whatever you want the first line of the text file to be. Okay, um, let's just keep it consistent. <laughs> okay, uh, so you're saying for the alliance, um, mm -hmm. let me just get that for you. Uh, for the alliance, uh, is what he's saying. <laughs> uh, there, we, there we go. You know, just just coming up with something nice. I like it. Alright, you like it? What mean people say. That's funny. Okay, so <laughs> um let's instead of using greeting, I'm actually gonna delete the greeting file. Mm -hmm. Uh it should actually get rid of it. Hopefully it got rid of did it get rid of it on your end too? Um when I just did that? I think so. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh yeah. what do we want? So um let's call this uh wow arguments. <laughs> wow arguments <laughs> okay 
And I'm, I'm really glad that, uh, so I want to make sure I thank everybody uh, that does know how to program, that's hanging out in my chat and helping answer questions. I really do appreciate it. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's super helpful for, for the Federation. Exactly. There we go. We, we got some Trek, Trek represent. All right, Bubs, run this code. All let's, right, let's do it. I think we all know what's going to happen here. For Darnassus. <laughs> all right. My life uh, for ire. I like that one. All right. Wow arguments.txt. Let's open it up. I'm going to anchor to you, Bubs. Let's go. For the Alliance is, is what, what idiots, idiots say. say. For the Horde is what mean people say. So there we go. <laughs> Uh, so we can write out these files one one line at a time. Is, is what is what derpy people say. <laughs> there you go. Sure, der der pie. Der pie. It's he's German. <laughs> he want he wants der pie. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm changing that. Yeah, so we don't have to worry about what the text is. Uh, I do. I do. This is personal. <laughs> Uh, Will, I, I have no idea. I will have to I will have to talk with him at some point. Uh, <laughs> okay, cool. That works. So the the point being that we can change any of this text and and pretty much right. do whatever we want with it, and it works pretty well. Whoops. There's a lot of sorcery that's happening. Deleting things at once. Yeah, I'm doing a little bit of sorcery. Sorry about that. <laughs> Herp, derp, dev chat, derp. There we go. Uh, mild amount of, of wizardry. Don't worry about the wizardry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's some basic text. And totally sanitized of the arguments about WoW stuff. Uh, so oh, that's that's some basic things, right? You can get some some ideas of how that works. Uh, so we can write lines to two files. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, as you can you can probably guess, we can read this data from from the file the exact same way. So let's do this. Um, why don't you on this line go ahead and make a variable, and I want you to store a string in it. And it's going to be the file name. No, file file name. Call yeah, just call it file name. And assign that equal to the file name that we created. Um, which was. Uh, use use quotes, buddy. That's a string. Sorry. There you go. Sure, that works. Semicolon at the end of the line. And then on line 26, instead of using the string literally there, use the variable file name, right? 26, you said? Sorry, could you repeat that? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, instead of this, uh -huh. use the file name. Does that make sense? Yep. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So... The reason I want you to do that is because I want us to do something else. Uh, so people are mentioning uh, some things in chat, which are um, they're mentioning that right line uh, actually overrides all the lines in the file, but there are actually ways of appending lines to the end so you can modify the file by just adding new content to the end. Mm -hmm. and, but we're not going to worry about that because we're just going to do something different here. Right. So after this, so you write lines into that file. Now what I want you to do is do file dot read all lines. And open parentheses and then say file name. I'm almost 90% sure is what it's going to ask for. Mm -hmm. Yep, looks like it does. Then put a semicolon at the end of the line. And then okay. at the beginning of line 28, I want you to type in so go over here, yep, and then say string space all text equals um, all. So essentially, you make a variable. Uh, does that not read it all? Where does it read? Where does it read all lines? Hang on. Uh, oh, that's uh, sorry, it's a string array. My bad. There we go. It won't yell at us anymore. 
<laughs> okay, so the square braces. I now have to explain the square braces. Um, I didn't really explain the list. I didn't explain the square braces here, but I'm going to explain them both now together. There are two mm -hmm. different ways of storing collections of information. So line 18, what we actually declared here, a list of strings, right? A list of strings. You can kind of get what that is, right? It's a list of strings, right? Mm -hmm. You have a collection of strings, and these are the strings you added them to the list, right? You said, hey, I've got my list, add on this string, add on that string. And then we said, write all the lines, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, when we read them all, we're reading out an array of strings. Now, an array is just another type of collection. I don't really want to get into the details of the, um, of the two different collections just to say that list is a more advanced collection and array is a simpler collection. But they store it in about the same way in the code base. Does that make sense? Like in, in the actual program, they're stored in the same way, which is just sequentially, mm -hmm. for the most part, kind of, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I need a lot of asterisks. Programming is, is like... Programming is complicated. Let's, let's put it that way. But Yeah, no shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, you can do it. So I do want to point out, like, um, yeah, see, Wheatlaw is commenting, like, I am trying not to say things that are wholly false. Uh, like, as so I'm saying things that are true enough to allow you to use them. Does that make sense? Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh the nerd uh also welcome back i haven't seen you in a while or at least you haven't talked in a while uh camel case and pascal case you can't tell the difference but apparently you can type the difference cool uh so when we do this we're gonna get all text i want to do one thing do you remember the for each loop mr bubs i don't um i mean i i do but i don't know how to do it put your cursor like there uh -huh. down where mine was there you go type in the word for each yeah. No, no. All, all uh, is one word. All, all one word. And then okay. choose in your little drop down that showed up, the one that mm -hmm. says it's for C sharp, and then hit tab. Got it. There you go. Very well. And item so in then collection. Yeah. So var item in collection. So in your little box. You could leave var if you like, or you can write the word string. It's up to you. Uh, and then hit tab. And I want you to write the word line. So L I N E instead of mm -hmm. item, because that makes more sense, right? Uh, yep. So we're saying, we're saying for each, you know, line yeah. variable in, and hit tab again. Or did you already? Yeah, okay, there we go. And say all text. There we go. So that's saying for each line that was in our all text that we read, right? Mm -hmm. And down here on line 32, I want you to do console.write line again. So the same way that we've been doing this every time, yep, mm -hmm. and open parentheses, and this time use the variable line to print out. Oops. There you go. So looking at this code, what's it look like it does? Um, it looks like it's going to write a line of everything that we have in our string. So write each Wait, one. Right. Yeah, Right. Let, exactly. let's run it, yeah. Four. Each one of those four lines, yep. Okay. But it's going to read them out of the file. Right. So I'm interested in seeing how that looks, I guess. I mean, it's not really going to look any more interesting than just writing the four <laughs> lines, but it's the fact that it wrote... <laughs> right, that, but it's going to do it in the terminal, right? Yeah. It's, it's going to present yeah. it to us. Go ahead and run it, yep. Okay. Let's take a look. There, yeah. There it goes. So... Cool. And if we take a look in our file... Mm -hmm. Uh, wait, why, why does mine still say that? Uh, I know it wrote it. Uh, do you have it unsaved or something? The wow, in wow arguments text, the text file? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It does say the derpy stuff though. Should I save? Oh, wait, no, that shouldn't. Yeah, we saved that. Mm -hmm. Finally, wow, arguments at txt. Mm-hmm. Right from there. Uh, in, your, in your terminal, type dir. And then hit enter. 
Okay, and then say rm, uh, and then say space wow arguments dot txt, and you can tab complete that. Okay, mm. good. That that should have gotten rid of it. So now hit up twice and and run it. Oh, thrice. Three. Sorry, yeah. Thrice. <laughs> you don't use thrice. Okay, now let me take a look at it. Uh, and it still says for the alliance. Still, oh, are we running that again or something? Why is that doing that? <laughs> what? Why is it recreating? So, I don't know because it's not even there. Right? Yeah. So here's the. S yeah. Hmm. I am assuming that it is actually our our collaboration tool that is getting us here. Uh, because I think it's trying to keep these files alive. Um, uh, Skull Crusher. Um, C Sharp was created by um, a, a guy that has created some other languages. Um, Uh, well, I, I don't know if he's a, uh, this was the, the lead architect of C sharp for quite a while. Um, so look, the original author of turbo Pascal, the chief architect of Delphi, and he currently works at Microsoft as the lead architect of C sharp. Uh, and if you've used TypeScript at all, he's the TypeScript like hmm. head guy right now. So that is the guy that did that one. That's Generally a smart speaking. dude. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, we won't worry about that. I think it's actually, as I said, I think it's Live Share that is causing this problem with this file coming back because we're yeah. both trying to delete it, but it being on your screen and mine, it's trying to keep it open. Um, so I think it's maintaining the file between us. Yeah, Anders, exactly. All I did to get to his wiki page was I was like Anders C sharp, and then I don't have to try to spell his last name. Mm. It's a really hard name to spell. Indeed. Um, well, if you you know I'm a you know I'm an I'm an American. Uh, foreign names don't usually make it here all that well. That's why we have so many <laughs> Smiths. And uh, um, I won't get into it, but I love Bubs's last name. It's hilarious. <laughs> Why is it hilarious? It's, it's Smith. It's Bub Smith. It's not Bub Smith. Birth name. It's on his birth certificate. This is Bub's <laughs> with a Z. Surprised you guys didn't know that. That's not Smith. <laughs> it's not? Oh. Uh, Jones? Johnson? That's the one. That's, Jones. Got it. Bub's Jones. I'm, Fran I'm Francisco Jones, man. I'm Frank Jones. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> Are you the Punisher? I wish I was. Okay, so this is kind of an interesting thing. We can kind of write write some sort of. Oh, I love I love the way that Crimson spelled that. Okay, I do like the way he said it spelled it. Let's it let's do like some it. more interesting stuff with uh, files. So I want to do something that's a little more interesting. Okay. So here's what I want you to do: mm -hmm. make another me make another function, another method, whatever you want to call it. Um, so you can copy line eighteen if you like as a starting point. Yeah. Okay, we'll do it. Uh, fix the spacing a little bit. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna do yep. this right now. And then curl of braces and stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm yeah, I'm not I'm not doing any. I'm not doing. It. Uh, curly braces, mother effers. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so instead of have fun with files, let's call this um, store real data. Okay. No, 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 up, up on the name. So like oh, here. Instead of where have fun. Oh, yeah, of course. Of yeah. Course. Change the name of this function. So this function is going to be called store real data. Mm -hmm. Totally real data. Okay. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. Thank you, John. Uh, there is a cool little command that I want you to type in. Uh, that's going to do some stuff for you. Oh, wait, hang on. We need it in that terminal. I need to, I need to look this up. Sorry. Uh -huh. 
yeah, hang on, hang on. Because <laughs> I don't remember how to do it in the in the net core command line. I don't usually. I don't. I don't do these. Let's see. Well, what is this? There we go. Some rock paper scissors going on in your in your chat? Yeah, people can play rock paper scissors in my chat. Sorry, I think I missed it. Mm, I don't think so. Ooh. Yeah, I did. Did uh did I even get in? No. Okay. Yeah, Crimson won either way. So congrats, Crimson. Wow. I didn't quite make it in. Okay, it's so coins rigged. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hang on. You think it's rigged? <laughs> I got something to tell you about that. Check my chat there, Bubs. Uh, didn't want to pick, so we randomly assigned rock. rock. No, no. The most recent thing that I, I to quote three. I sw I swear. Oh, I swear it's not rigged. <laughs> Dev chatter. Three twenty two thousand eighteen. See? Wow, four days. That was four days after my daughter was born. Oh, see, there you go. Some there people go. were streaming then, Bubs. I didn't take off multiple <laughs> weeks of streaming when your daughter was born. Oh, that, weeks? I took off like the year, man. It was crazy. Yeah, I was, I was, I was back teasing, Bubs. Why would I take off streaming when? Uh, I, to be honest, I stopped streaming actually when my son was born. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know I that. I remember. Yeah. I do remember. And then I started up again a couple of months later. Okay, so this this text that I put in here in this comment, go ahead uh -huh. and copy that whole thing, and you're going to run that in the terminal. I'm going to run this in the terminal just like that. Yep, just like that. Add package, Newtonsoft. Let's do because it. I really like Newtonsoft's JSON. Where and is yes, this that is pronounced from? What JSON. What are you doing my computer? Uh, that actually downloads it from the internet. Uh, it's actually it's, it, it comes from a. Uh, I know it's from the internet. More specific, please. What is this? Oh, oh, hang on, hang on, guys. I get to do a. I get to do a nice, nice brag on the internet. Uh, if you use NuGet when it was first coming out and their like first uh, version of this, uh -huh. uh, you got to pull those from code that I wrote. So, well, by me, I mean me and a, and a whole team of people. But I was one of the people that wrote the code that did that thing. So yeah, so if you, if you use NuGet in the early days, you you had to pull it from our stuff. Uh, Interesting. <laughs> I swear it's not rigged. Okay, so <laughs> what that does uh, down down here, go ahead and do .NET build again. Yeah, don't you oh. like how rigged rigged automatically does quote three, which is an interesting thing to explain to people because I, I allow the aliases for commands. So I, I all the commands on my bot have aliases that, that you can create for them. Uh, and uh -huh. you can actually create an alias that has like parameters. So rigged actually just calls quote three. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of funny. So, so .NET yep. build in the terminal, correct? Correct. Yep. You got it. Hit enter and it should work. So that actually is what downloads it from the internet. Uh, mm -hmm. And you now have Newton Soft JSON. You've got uh, some guy named James wrote this code, and now you've loaded it onto your computer. Mwahaha! <laughs> yeah, it's no. PTL self destruct in five. Oh god! Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing, yeah, exactly. <laughs> super, super dangerous. Do you know what kind of stuff this code does? It um, oh, man. it lets you convert data into new forms. Okay, so I want to teach you another fun thing. We're gonna go down here. This is the complicated part. So go down to the bottom of the file where I am here. Put your cursor down here. Bottom of the file where you are. Yep. Down. Down here. Oh, well, there you are. Jeez. Yep, line 61. 61. Yeah, way bottom of the file here. Mm -hmm. um, so tab over one 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 time and then type in public class. Wait, where, where's your... Yeah, there you are. Oh, what the heck? Okay. <laughs> okay, public class. So public space class space Let's say person, capital P. There you go. Okay. And then enter, and then double curly braces. Mm -hmm. So we're going to learn about um, types a little bit now. I think I talked about them a little bit. I don't remember exactly in the last one. Um, <laughs> people are playing hangman in my chat, bubs. <laughs> Uh, I want you to type in awesome. uh, this, these letters, P-R-O-P, and then hit tab. Okay. Uh, actually, here. You, uh, does it have an option that says it's C-sharp? I can't see your yeah, IntelliSense. Yeah, yeah, an automatically in implemented property. Yeah, there you go. That's the one you cool. want. Uh, and change from int to string, and then hit okay. tab. Oh. 
Uh huh. And my property to uh first name, I guess. We're gonna be culturally insensitive. <laughs> okay. Uh, capital F, capital N. Come on, man. Gotcha. I don't know. Sometimes we do it. Sometimes we don't. <laughs> I'm like. All right. So then hit tab again. Got it. Now hit enter. Squiggly, squiggly dudes, enter. Yep. And type prop tab. Mm -hmm. String, tab, okay. last name, tab, and then hit enter, and then type prop, uh -huh. and then hit tab. Uh, are we changing this to string or no? Nope, leave it in. Okay. Tab, and then say age, capital A. Whoa. There we go. Um, and hit tab again. Sweet. Awesome. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Hmm. Let's go on. Uh, actually, before we uh, hang on, let me this see. This looks like fun. Okay. Uh, so on that line sixty-three where I just was, go yep. ahead and type in C T O R tab. And hit. Uh, oh, that was the wrong one. Uh, that's fine. Hit tab once. Okay. Type in the word person. Capital P. Come on, bubs. <laughs> I'm going to get this. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. So this is a special method that we're talking about. This one's extra special. Okay. So I want to tell you about this one. So here's why this method is special. So if we look at our previous functions, so uh -huh. follow me up here to line 42. Um, I could have written this. So we right. say private, static, void, have fun with binary. Now I'm going to explain what these parts mean. Private means that it can only be called from within this class. Don't worry too much about that. That's why we didn't have it there. But I want you to see it so that you know that that's a thing. Okay. Static is special. We're going to ignore that one. Void is our return type. Mm -hmm. So when you call a function, sometimes it gives you something back. And let me show you with an example. On line 45... Mm -hmm. We call read line, right? See console.readline here that I've got highlighted? Yep. So this is a function, and it returns back a string. So see how we get user input equals console.writeline? Mm -hmm. So what that means is that console or console read line, this mm -hmm. returns a string that can then be used by the other code. If you look at write line, you'll notice we don't save a variable from it because right line doesn't return anything. You have your cursor ready? If you do, put your mouse mm -hmm. over the word right line in, in, uh, on line 50, mm -hmm. and it pops up some text, and you see what it right. says on the bottom? Void console dot right line string value. You see that? Okay. Yep. That is the uh, actual declaration of the right line method that you're calling it's showing mm. you what that code would really look like where it is so that's the neat thing about this is that you can kind of see hey that's what that is so thinking down here back in our person class where you've got your cursor still um mm -hmm. we have public person and let me put a space here so this method is sort of so this is a main method you'll notice this doesn't have the same structure if I were to write a method like that one, I might do private static void. Uh, well, I might say like string and say something like get name. And I could say something like, we're not actually going to leave this code, hence why I'm writing it. Mm -hmm. Return the name, right? And so if you call person.getName, mm -hmm. which we could do if we want, person.getName, string name equals that, right? This is going to create person. This is going to store the name in this variable name, right? Right. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, a lot of concepts here. That's why I want to make sure I'm... Take it at least it slowly enough that it makes sense. So is. this is a function. Hurts, here. It, it does. 
<laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Not about the brain hurting part. The uh, the it makes no, no, sense part. I, listen, man. Listen, man. No pain, no gain. Works the same. Okay. With the brain, you know. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. Mm-hmm. Inside of these parentheses, right in here. So where my cursor is. So put your cursor there. This is a special function. This one is actually called the constructor. Okay. So when you create a person object, this method is actually called automatically when you create it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So type in string and then lowercase f first name. And then lowercase f. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, sorry, with a space there oh. between them. My bad. No worries. Capital N for name, Ooh. and then do the and then say comma and then say string last name with a lowercase L but a capital N. Um, yep, just like that. And then comma int and then lowercase a age. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Down here, inside of this, I want you to say, so notice these are variable declarations, right? They look the same as the ones that we had up above. It's just they're all in one line instead of all separate. Right. We have declared these as the variables that you can pass into our constructor. Now what I want you to do is this, these are class level members. So these are sort of, I'm not going to explain exactly how they work, but kind of think of these like class level variables. They're special class level variables. So starting with a capital F, do the, uh, say first name with a capital F equals first name with a lowercase f. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, you got the right one. And uh-huh. then space equals, and then first name with a lowercase f. There you go. And then okay. put in a semicolon. And do this same thing for last name and age on the next two lines. Okay. So I think that makes sense. Yep. So essentially what you're saying is, I'll wait until you're done typing that. Yeah. And the uh, age and one. Then, uh... That makes sense. <laughs> yep, that makes sense. Okay. Okay, and that is perfect. So essentially mm-hmm. what you're doing is you're saying, hey, the first name, the last name, and the age that I received, I want to assign those into these properties of my mm-hmm. class. So this is basically the way that you populate it full of data normally. It's a big concept, and we're going to use it a little bit up here. So go up to store real data on line 19. Okay. Put your cursor there. And I want you to say var space bubs, lowercase b. There are a lot of naming conventions right now. I'm just having you do them. Uh, they, uh-huh. they will eventually become familiar once you do them enough. And then Got space it. equals, I'm, I'm not going to explain them all because it's hard to explain <laughs> them to, you know. Certainly. Professional developers. And then now say new person yep uh space and a capital p on person sorry there you go open parentheses and watch what it'll give you helper text so you should see some text that says first name right not person string first name string last name yeah so put in the string first name okay uh no just as a double in uh double quotes no no just put put in the one that you want you're making a person oh, object. Like an actual name. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you can do that one. Mm-hmm. And then uh, double quotes. No. Oh, okay. no, I know where I'm going. If you, you want to call me, yeah, if you want to say no, that I'm Bubs, that's fine. Yeah. I, I know where I'm going with this. Okay, and then? Uh, so after the double quotes, a comma, and then the next one. For the last name? Right? <laughs> uh, yeah, put in the last name. Jones, and then age. Whoa. Gotcha, but gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. 
Frankie Jones, a 13 year old, 430 years old. <laughs> All right. Oh, for real, for real, for real, for real, for real, for real. There you go. Wow, are you really? You're a lot older yes. than I thought. It's pretty shitty. But that you're still a young shitty. man. You're still a young man. <laughs> All right, so let's do another console right line. So go ahead and console right line right down here. Console right line. I'm going to let you explain this real quick while I, while we type this out. Uh, binoculars in my chat ask, what you making? Oh. I have no idea. Oh, uh, binoculars. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to make a very useful tool for Mr. Bubs here. Uh -huh. um, this is, uh, we're, we're actually going to store this data. Um, so right now I'm having him coded in by, we're coding this uh, example person in by hand. But we're mm -hmm. gonna have we're gonna have you fill it out on the command line a little bit, so. Um, so store some data. Open parens, and then do a dollar sign double quote this time. Money. And the reason why we're doing that, you might remember this from last time, but uh, the yeah. dollar sign before the double quote means that it is using string interpolation, and we, that's a fancy way of saying we're gonna insert variables into our string. Um, right. So here's what we're gonna do. Inside of that, you're going to say uh, curly brace. Okay. Uh, bubs dot first name. Uh, and actually, so you can get autocomplete and put the end curly brace in first also. And then it'll probably help you out. So now when you're typing in, so, so bubs and then dot inside the curly braces there. Yep. Yep, you're right. First name? Yep, first name. Like this? Yep, exactly like that. And okay. now do the same thing, but for last name. Uh, do I have to, can I continue in the quotations or do I start somewhere else? Still in the quotation, so like that uh, with a space right. between them. Okay. It'll look better if you put the space between them like that. Yeah. Uh, wait, let's put the curly braces, man. <laughs> it did age. Yeah, it did age for me. Uh, and then, and the then maybe put a dash and then... Uh, a dash? Yeah, why not? Uh, no, I meant uh, here. Like that. Hmm. And now do the curly braces, right? Yep. And then say bubs.age. Cool. All right. Cool. Uh, so now on line 12. <laughs> Bayanaka says you have the best tutoring voice I've ever heard. No, I I'm, I'm not going to lie. I don't think I could... <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, I don't know if you if, if you're listening to it from my my stream, like my end. I have a playlist called Show Hop that I absolutely love, which I I've normally I've always used for like studying or when I'm working or focusing on something. So like between Brendan's voice and this music that's going on in the background, it's like <laughs> so zen over here, man. I, I can't even explain it, but it's working real well. It's a good nice. combination of your voice and show hop. It does work. But good. I've had people tell me that before, by the way. I don't mean to interrupt, but people have told me uh, after our first episode of this that they're like, man, Brendan's a really good teacher, or he's done, or he's taught before, one or the other. Uh, <laughs> both. Uh, yeah. I, I have taught, I've definitely yeah. taught before. Yeah, you, de you definitely do a good job. And, and being raised by teachers where my mother's a teacher, my grandmother's a teacher, my aunts are teachers, my wife's a teacher, you do, you do good, man. You do good. Glad, <laughs> glad to hear it. Uh, yeah. So let's let's uh, call that method the store real data. Let's call it on line eleven up here, and okay. uh, then then we'll run this. Line eleven store real data. Hmm. Right. Uh, yep, that is correct. And then open close parentheses and a semicolon. Got it. And let's run it. This is a bit of typing. That was that was some coding right there. Uh... Oh, shit. Yeah, oh. we have a bunch. We, we did a bunch of typing right now. Yeah, that's good. So that's okay, saved. Here we go. Good. Yes. Uh, do .NET run. Uh, wow, you were really excited about running there. I was. <laughs> the caps. Run! Run! Uh, run! Dot, dot .NET, get down! <laughs> here we go. I am having way too much fun with this. Uh, hey, there it goes. Whoa, Frankie Jones, thirty. Nice. So looks like it stored it in that in that you know complex structure, that person object, and lets you create it. Exactly. So uh, what is it? Crimson green. We want to do some 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 real data, right? Uh, I mean, it doesn't actually have to be like real data, real data, but we've looked at uh, how to say this. Um,
asking the user for data in the console. So let's do that instead. Okay. So in your store real data method, so this ran, prints it out. Let's go ahead and try to pull this data from elsewhere. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, no problem. All right, where your where your cursor is? Yep. Twenty. Got it. Yep. So let's write out a quick message to the user because remember instructions are helpful. Mm -hmm. So do a console write line. Uh, and okay. let's send out a message that's something like, "Enter your first name." Okay, and now uh, put a semicolon on the end of the line and let's uh, do a console read line and store it in a variable called first name. Um, okay. Uh, Var on the beginning of the line and then sorry. call that because read line returns that value to us. Right which so, is kind of a weird concept. We haven't gotten into that many methods yet, so. Right. Uh, and then here, uh, last name? Uh, hang on. No. Nope, nope, nope. So right here, we want to declare a variable on line 21. So before read line, say first name equals. Oh, I see. Yep. Because we got to store the results of the read line somewhere. Makes sense. And now semicolon on the end of the line and once you get that then all the red squigglies should be gone yep. okay good the squigglies are gone so now uh let me get you some extra space here duplicate these so copy line 20 and 21 mm -hmm. and then you know paste them so we've got a duplicate and uh, change just put them right here for now 17 no 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 no, no. down, down oh. like we're gonna do them right one oh, right like after the actual... other yeah okay yeah okay. yeah yeah I thought we were using it for later for nope. something. Uh, okay. And then the first one, mm -hmm. so this, this I should say this, needs to become last name. Yep. That way it's easier. I see, I see what we're doing. That way it's easier to... Uh... Yep. So we're going to ask them for their first name, and then we're going to ask them for their last name. Yeah. Is that correct? Yep. Looks good. And I'm now we need to ask them... Age. Exactly. Yep. You got it. Cool. And this That's one's cool. going to be a little weird. <laughs> because you'll remember so notice that like I mean you can see on line 29 the strings mm -hmm. are inside quotes and in our string types and that's a number so right. remember the int dot parse that we did before yep yep so hop over here on line 27 and do int dot parse um, right where you're yep there you go. right there and then open parenthesis mm -hmm. And put the closing one on the other side of the read line. Oh. Because we're just going to pass that directly in. Got it. Does that make sense? It does. So the, the return value of this is going directly into parse. To parse. And then the return value of parse is coming into age. Got it. And just to make that... So notice we can use either var or int, and either one works just fine. Okay. Uh, on line 29, notice we created a person object. We did. Instead of using Frankie Jones 30, why don't we instead Use. give it the variables first name, last name, and age? Right. So, um, if I'm doing this correct, uh, without the quotes, right? Uh, correct. Uh, get rid of the word var, though. Oh. So just the yep. string. Yeah, so the only time we the only time we say var or the type is when we're declaring it. Got it. So every other time we use it, we just use it by name. Which for all of these things, it'll just take time and getting used to it and then programming will make more sense. <laughs> Everything Indeed. that makes sense, good. Okay, so save and run this. Let's do it. And in theory now, it should prompt us to enter our first name, our last name. So enter your first name. 
I will. Uh, cloud. Mm hmm. Yep, enter. And then fair. Oh, strife, that's fine. <laughs> uh, and his age, I don't remember. Was it 27? Uh, no, whoa, no. I thought he was like 21 or something. Like saying, 19, yeah, maybe? 19? I thought, it, I thought I, well, last time I said 17, somebody told me it was way off. No, 17's uh, like Tifa's age. Yeah, so it's probably 19. I think it was, I'm going to say 21. I think 21's the right answer. Crimson? Uh, hang on. Look it up. Uh, age, you know, let's see. Final Fantasy 7, 21. Yeah, it's 21. There you go. Yeah, good call, good call. Yeah, okay. Somebody's 27. Tifa's 20. Damn. Just like okay, that. there you go. Know. All right, there we go. Cloud Strife, 21, ex-soldier. <laughs> yeah, ex-soldier, exactly. Okay, so great. That works, right? Uh -huh. So so clearly you can populate data into that person object and do something with it. Cool. All right, let's do, let's do something nice with it. Um, so instead of just writing it out to the console, mm -hmm. let's do this. Um, we're going to do something different. Uh, I want you to right here use that JSON stuff that we added before. So uh, what I want you to type is JSON, J-S-O-N, capital J. No, no, not Jason the name, J, no, just J-S-O-N. <laughs> there you go. And then say capital C, no space, uh -huh. uh, O-N-V-E-R-T. So it says JSON convert. Got it. J Jason Jones. <laughs> yes, Jason Jones. Uh, like so right where you are, I want you to hit Control Dot and then hit uh, Tab, and it should add the thing up at the top. Uh, well, which one? Uh, because it gives me an option. First one, I think. Using Newton. Yeah, that one. Oh, okay. Okay, good. All it right. added the right thing to the top of the file. <laughs> That's why I'm glad I asked. Yep. Because there's okay. seven of them. So go ahead and hit a dot. And then say, serialize object. And serialize like serial killer. Yeah, that one. Not like yeah. breakfast cereal. No, no. Right. Yeah. Frankie, Jones, uh, Frankie Jason Jones. Okay, so That's now open up your uh, open parentheses and say <laughs> bubs. Okay. Right, because that's what we call the variable. It doesn't matter what it is. And then right. put a semicolon on the end of the line. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of the line... So serialize object returns back something. If you if you just put your cursor over it, you'll see it says string JSON convert serialize object object value. So serialize returns something. It doesn't doesn't kill it. Like yeah, it. exactly. It's not a, it's not actually a serial killer. Right, uh, basically, what it does is it chops it up into pieces. <laughs> no, it doesn't really chop it into pieces. <laughs> we'll see it in a bit. It's actually no, doing the reverse. There. We're both dads. I'm sorry. Yeah. We're trying. It's, yeah, it does, does the opposite of this, actually. Uh, right. Okay, so go ahead and say string and mm -hmm. call it... Uh, At the beginning of this, right? Yep, yep, right where you are. And say uh -huh. all text equals or something like that. All text and then equals like that. That looks good. And so cool. now, in, uh, let's write that out. So do a console write line of all text, and we'll see what that is before we write it to a file. Snack bar is a serial killer. <laughs> ah. That's a good point, Crimson Green, that he remembers Cloud's age because his mom said he should settle down with an older girl. I do remember that. And Eris is 22, so it's only a year older. <laughs> so settle down for yeah. year. one year. All right. Thanks, Mom. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so at the end of this, uh, line 30. Uh, right. Nope, uh, line 33. Oh, my apologies. Let's put it there. Write out there. all text. Yep. Uh, act text. Okay. Now, down here. Oh, Con console write line, the all text, as in send it to the console so we can all read it. it. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. My brain's not working after a while. Yep, I know. <laughs> I'm impressed that people do this eight plus hours a day for a living. <laughs> oh, the, th the thing that'll really surprise you here, Bubs, is that uh, there are a lot of devs that'll uh, code all day long as a full time job and then go home and do and, and do more of it. There are plenty yeah. of devs who do. No, let me tell you. Let me tell you. It's impressive. We've been doing this right. for what two and a half hours. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. 
and I'm already like <laughs> brain is mush. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Will. Uh, go ahead and run the uh, run the code. Let's see what happens. Let's so that it. that should write it out a little differently. So you're gonna find out what serialize object did. And so our first name. Okay. the log cart 20. Look at that. Okay. Isn't that, let's see the curly braced weirdness. That yeah. is, that is a JSON formatted uh, object. So, so JSON, uh, that mm -hmm. J-S-O-N is an acronym. Okay. Um, and it stands for uh, Java Script Object Notation or J-S-O-N. Gotcha. That makes sense? It does. Uh, you've probably heard of JavaScript. It is, mm -hmm. you know, the programming language that runs in your browser. Mm -hmm. um, runs in some other places as well, but that's the most common place where it is. Mm -hmm. uh, it was created uh, by a guy named Brendan, which means that it's good. Um, <laughs> just kidding, everybody. Uh, the uh, So, essentially, the idea is notice it has... First name Tifa, last name Lockhart, age 20, right? So it gives us all the data that we need. Right. <laughs> and sort of the way it's structured is an object, the whole object is in curly braces, and then you get, you know, first name, and then its value instead of having like an equal sign as a colon, and then a comma between each value. We don't really need to worry about that, but that's just a type of data format that we can use. So we wrote this out to the console. Instead of doing that, let's write it to a file. So scroll down to line 49. Got it. File, write all lines. Yeah, so we did that before, but this time yeah. instead of write all lines, let's do write all text. So go back up and at line 34. Instead of writing Sorry. to the console... It's okay. I don't know what's changed, but it's fine. 34. Okay. Instead <laughs> yeah, of writing up here, to the console. Do a file dot write all text instead of console dot um, write line. Okay. File dot write all. There you go. And let's add another argument to write all text because its first argument should be the file path. And then the second one is the context. So before the word all text inside of the parens there, I want you to type in uh, inside of quotes, um, let's call it, uh, I don't know, people.txt. And then a, an end double quote and then a comma. So we have now told this, hey, write this into that file. File. Mm -hmm. Now, you probably remember that we can read text as well, the same way, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So let's, instead of this, let's say, um, uh, we're going to clear that. We're going to use that again in a minute. Uh, so right here on line 36, I want you to say file dot uh, read, uh, and I forget what the options are. Uh, read I can't all see. lines, read all text. Read all text is the one we want. Mm -hmm. There you go. And then open parentheses and ask for people.txt again. There we go. And okay. what I want you to do is I want... Uh, actually, let's read it all. Let's read it as lines. Let's read all lines. Uh, file that read all lines instead. Yeah, yeah. Let's read all lines. Okay. So that's gonna get us all of our people. And actually, let me. I messed something up. So let me back this up for a second. I will put this right back the way it is. Control Z and don't do anything. There we go. My hands are up, man. Yep. Good. You take the wheel. I just wanted to preserve the code that I that I nuked from a minute ago, so I undid mm. and then copied it and redid it. So there we go. Um, so this prints out bubs, right? 
Right. Bub's first name, Bub's last name, Bub's age. So this is going to grab all people. Let's store this in a variable. So on line 36, go ahead and type in var and say all lines. Uh, beginning of the line, where, uh, where are you typing? In your chat, man. All oh, lines. okay. Yeah, var all <laughs> lines. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like this, maybe? Uh, yep, looks great. Equals. Equals. Okay, good. All right, so now here's what I want to do. So remember, we did a for each loop. Mm -hmm. uh, so down here, and I'll explain why we left that console right line alone in a second. I want you okay. to do another for each loop right down here on line 40. So we now have... All, a list of what's in that file, right? And hit tab once you got for each written. Yep. Oh, that's all it gave me. Uh, put put it back in and make sure you pick the one that says C sharp in the drop down. So just so everybody sees what he's seeing, I'll do it on mine also. Yeah. So if you mouse down, you get the one that uh, not mouse cursor down one. You see the C sharp one. Uh, yeah, hit yeah, tab yeah, yeah. and then you get that. Mm -hmm. So do it on your end with for each also there, bubs. So everybody on your end can see what you typed. Oh, yep. or you can just use, or you can just steal mine if you like. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm going to delete yours, man. <laughs> okay, there we go. Cool. Uh, so now, uh, so var instead of item, so hit tab. Instead of item, say line. So tab. Uh, line, right. No. Nope. Oh, no. We're Leave var. var. Uh, taking out. Yes. Yep. Change that to be line. Hit tab yep. and then say all lines instead of collection. Because that is our collection. It's called all lines. There we go. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So cool. So that is going to make us loop over every line that's in your file, your people.txt file. And now mm -hmm. what we want to do is we want to write these out. So let's take this right here. So what is so that code on line 42 takes a person object and prints out its first name, last name, and age, right? Mm -hmm. What person object is it printing out right now? Um, it is printing out... Um, the bubs one. The, yeah, wh whatever we, we enter, right? Yeah, it's whatever you just typed in. Yeah. We don't want it to do that. We want it to print mm -hmm. out whatever one we just read out of the file. Mm -hmm. So let's get one from the file. So right here, this is a line of text that we wrote to the file. And here's what we want to do. We want to type in something else. So that JSON convert could serialize an object, which is a fancy way of saying take the object, turn it into like data, right? The string data that we saw. That was that the JSON that we printed out. But right. we want to deserialize it now. So on line 42, mm -hmm. go ahead and type in JSON convert the same way we did before. Mm -hmm. Say dot deserialize object. Okay. There you go. And then less than person, uh, capital, P, capital yep, P, greater than, mm -hmm. and then open parentheses. And now pass in line. Like that? Yep. And put a semicolon on the end of the line. And let's, uh, at the beginning of the line, make a new variable. So the beginning of line 42. So uh, deserialize. At the, at the beginning of line 42, you said? Correct, yes. Okay. So deserialize object is going to give us back the object that it deserialized from that text. So this is going to give us a person object and say, so say var and then with a lowercase p say person. So the reason I'm specifying all the casing, a lot of programming languages, including C sharp, are case sensitive. Right. So capital P person uh, in this case is the name of our class uh, that we created. That's like the definition of that object. Lowercase p is not that variable. So we, we can use it and there's no confusion, no weirdness there. So that's just a person. So now instead of bubs in each one of these right lines, 
Mm -hmm. Right? Put it in person instead. I want to know your sorcery to be able to change that all at once. Uh, depends on which <laughs> thing you mean. There's a couple of bits of sorcery that I've used. Uh, where you replaced every, uh, everything all at once. So, for example, you did it here uh, with the lines of text. You were able to change all, all that all at once. So there, I know there's a way where everywhere it said bubs like that, you can just type in person and it replaces it, right? <laughs> If I were a wizard, you'd cone about it, canoe about it. I'd canoe about it. <laughs> oh, no. That's impossible. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, so part of the reason why we use all these various, uh, like, more advanced tech, we're in a very advanced text editor, to say the right. least. Right. Right. Programmers don't usually program in Notepad. That's not to say that if you program in Notepad, you can't be a programmer. You really can. Uh, but we like these because they make it a little bit easier. So this is just an advanced text editor. It's got all kinds of fun little features. You don't really need to worry about writing on multiple lines. Um, okay. I usually just do it to, because I can make a couple of things a little faster. I don't want to add extra confusion. We're learning programming, not not text editors. Exactly. Okay. Welcome back, Binoculus. Yes, welcome back. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can pull this data. I want to change something. Uh, okay. Uh, let me confirm what it is. Well, append all text append. Yeah, let's do it this way. Uh, okay, so instead of write all text, uh, I want you to change that to append all lines here on line 34. Okay. So it's gonna it's... we're gonna get red squiggles when you do that. Sure, no problem. Append all text. Uh, all lines. Append all lines. This one. Okay. And now, uh, on line thirty-four, instead of mm -hmm. all text, uh, actually, is it is that just, is it just gonna take that? It's not red squiggling for me. Maybe it'll work. Uh, the only thing that's red squiggly for me is the alt text. Alt text is red squiggly? Okay, it's not on my end. Good. So it okay. should have been. It wasn't on my end. That's why I was like, wait a minute. It, it's not yelling at us. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's not yelling at you on yours. What the heck, yeah. man? Okay, so uh, I'm going to do a mild amount of wizardry here. Um, I'm done wizarding now. Mm -hmm. uh, so essentially, all I did there was I, I wrapped that. So... It says all lines, so it's expecting a collection of lines. So what I did there, and anybody that's watching, you can just do this same thing, like this exact structure. So it's right. new, square braces, and then I wrapped my single value in curly braces. I basically told it, hey, make a quick little collection here and put this data in it to begin with. Mm -hmm. And essentially then I have a collection with one item, is all that is. So it works pretty well. Uh, and let me just make sure that we didn't miss anything in our code. Uh, so string all text. Uh, let me do this real fast. Um, uh, <coughs> I'm just going to write a thing here. Um, He's doing a thing. Uh, all lines length. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there we go. I did. I did. I did my thing. Uh, I think we have everything we need. Let's let's try this. It might not work. We'll give it a shot. Go ahead and run it, Bubs. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we all get. All right, man. Let's do it. Mechanics say the same thing, man. They say, fire her up. Let's see what happens. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That, I mean, that funny thing is really. <laughs> That's really how it is. All right. So uh, let's start with, go with Cloud, if you like. Or, uh, let's or go Barrett. Bar let's go Barrett, go Barrett Wallace. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. I forget his <clears> name. He's older, right? He's in his 30s. Uh, at least. If not like 50. <laughs> no, I don't do him like that. 
Barrett Wallace age is 35. His uh, job is the leader of Av- Avalanche. Yeah, or as, as we call him, uh, bioterrorist. Eco-terrorist? Eco-terrorist. <laughs> Eco-terrorist. There we go. So, uh, contact list, one person, Barrett mm-hmm. Wallace. Printed it out. Right there. Uh, let's go ahead and run your program again. Okay. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're about to find out. Uh, and type in a different person. Hmm. This is a hard last name. Gamesborough. Yeah. I don't I thought it was the simple one, just I thought it was the non complicated one, but maybe I don't remember. Uh, it there d- it is, yeah, it's G- Gainsborough. Okay, I was on my I was on my way. And she's twenty two. Gainsero. Good job. Oh damn it. Forget to be. Right, well, there we go. Are, uh, Ooh, look at our matter. contact she's, list. It's building she's up no there. with us no more anyway. Bubs, your contact list is building up. Why don't you run it again? Add somebody else that to is, your list. That is awesome. This is like a this is like a this is like a fancy Rolodex right now, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Forty. <laughs> <laughs> you you don't have to get the ages right here, Bubs. Oh my god, there's no way. Oh, Final Fantasy VII, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Jesus. I, I saw something here, so I typed it in. It said before Crisis 26, and I was like, wait, what? No, hang on, hang on. Final Will, Will I pointed out in the beginning, I was going to be culturally insensitive and do first name, last name. <laughs> uh, and, and actually, so the idea, it, re- it really is actually a problem to use first name and last name because some people really don't have, uh, like both a first name and a last name. And especially if you use a middle name, then you really run into problems because there are a lot of people that don't have middle names. And then restrictions on names are also a problem. Uh, but more, more I just did it this way because this is a, an easy structure for people to understand mm-hmm. with uh, a first name, last name, and an age. It's a, it's a simple little structure. Hey, smart ASCII. Yeah, I read 13, exactly. <laughs> oh, here's a good one, actually. I'm going to do one more. This is fun. Matting yeah. everybody. <laughs> uh, so the funny thing is, we can actually make this easier, so you don't have to run it every time. <laughs> Kate said, "Not is he really? Old? Is that, that the robot's like nine years old?" Yeah, yeah. The toy, the toy itself, the robot itself is only nine years old. Yeah, there you go. Because <laughs> how old's Reeve? Like, That's you know, eighty. <laughs> That's a joke. Reeve actually doesn't look that old. He's probably like. I don't know, thirties or forties. Uh, anyway, for anyone that doesn't know, uh, these are 35. all references to thirty-five. There you go. See, uh, they're, they're all references to Final Fantasy VII. So he's using all the all the character names from there. No, uh, we just finished the playthrough of it. That's why. Yeah, <laughs> I'm still so on that. It's good high. stuff. Yeah. So I love that game. Pretty cool, huh? Mm-hmm. That's a great contact list to have. <laughs> It really would be. Too bad you weren't <laughs> smart enough to get phone numbers or addresses or email addresses. Well, I didn't know. We didn't get you that You could have called them up on your PHS class, there, man. Bubs. We didn't get that far in the programming class. Do you have your, PH- do you have your PHS, though? Uh, I do. Good. Oh, damn it. I wish I had it as a ringtone or a text tone so I could play it. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been cool. So, yeah, that was the, that was the, the cool thing that I, that I wanted to get to there is that you can actually store it. So if you want to see what this data looks like... Mm-hmm. Um, Let's open up people.txt. Uh, there it is. Cool. And see, there, there's the data stored in here. So, And you fixed it, see? <laughs> so Bub's figured out that you can actually just now change this data. So the cool thing is uh, that you can, um, like, I mean, this, this then just is data. So in, in a lot of simple games that you might play, uh, so for, for Bub's and anybody over there in the, in the Bub's chat, um, a lot of a lot of video games that you play do just have data that is essentially stored like this. Most of the time, they have it stored in in some uh, like it's not really encrypted. They're not trying to like they're just trying to make it so you don't like just modify it. Um, but it's often like in the game file as binary data and things like that. So that's essentially if you if you grabbed a program that modded your game and changed the names and things like that, that's usually what it's doing. It's just modifying these values. Um, for those sorts of things. 
Uh, when you save a file, this would be the kind of data that it might save. Whether or not you can see it that way or not is a, a different question. And Bubs is running it again because we need to add Vincent. Um, <laughs> Come on. The, uh, that is well. So if anyone played the original Diablo 1, uh, the reason why that game was uh, so broken is that um, in Diablo 1, it stored your character in a pretty easy format on your computer. And that is the same as when you were playing multiplayer online. So that meant that someone could just write a program that would modify all of these types of values on your local computer. And when you went online to play with someone else, you could have any item you wanted, as much money as you wanted, your character could be whatever level, whatever power. And, and so Diablo 1's multiplayer was broken because of that. So the game just stored its data, right? They weren't thinking, you know, it's it's in such early days of of like multiplayer. Battle.net was one of the first places that you could actually play multiplayer that mm -hmm. it wasn't really like, oh, we got to make sure this is super secure. Like, <laughs> I mean, I think we were lucky to have multiplayer back then. All right, close the people.txt file. Wait, uh, quick we don't question. Want is weird. the reason why Vincent Valentine didn't get added, even though I did it? Uh, he he would be added, but it probably got messed up because we had it open. Remember, the uh, um, like us having the file open is causing it to yeah. not like read correctly. Yep. So yep. like the file's really changing, I think. But the because you really read it out of there, the the program saw it. But yep. uh, VS Code is getting confused because Live Share is is doing some stuff. That makes sense. <laughs> okay. Well, just wanted to. Yeah. You know, fifty seven years old, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Vincent is... I mean, I would have expected him actually to be older. You know, he's a vampire and all. Yeah, I, I thought he would be Spoiler older. Spoiler alert. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert, the character that you meet in-game in a coffin uh, is a vampire. And he's not dead. <laughs> yeah, yes, the, the non-dead character. He's almost undead. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so cool. Uh, those are actually the main things that I wanted to make sure that we covered today. Uh, is there anything else you want to mess around with in here? Because um, we got, like, what stuff we did, we, we messed around with numbers. We did conversions from decimal numbers into binary numbers and back again. Uh, we looked at how you could convert numbers into mm -hmm. characters. Remember, we uh, turned numbers into characters. Right. And then we did some file stuff, some serializing of data and objects. Uh, we could do a lot more advanced things with this contact list, so maybe we'll do some more with that uh, next time. Yeah, we can save this and then continue to build upon it. Yeah. Uh, Crimson Green says that you should make him a sandwich. He was clearly Ooh. talking to you and not Crimson Green wants you to make well, him a I sandwich. I mean, this is your chat, man. He was that was in your chat. Well, yeah, but we were asking what Bubs should do. Oh. So yeah, so clearly that's what it was. <laughs> uh, no, Will, we're not covering reflection anytime soon. Oh boy, <laughs> that's a yeah. That you don't even want to know what it is. I'm not even going to no, talk about. <laughs> I man, I love I love I love devs on uh, on Twitch. Right, second day of coding, everyone's like, oh, do uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Build me a something. Yeah, and it's just, and and the and the tough part with second day uh, is it's uh, second day with a like twenty nine day you know break in between. Mm -hmm. uh, so Crimson Green's suggestion isn't that bad. We could actually do that one. He is suggesting inheritance, and we could explain that one. Bubs, your daughter anything like you? Uh, well, we'll find out. But so far, I mean, you can tell, right? A little bit yeah, with yeah, baby's personality. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like nine months. Yeah. You can. I think so. I think so. She she inherited some of your traits. Certainly. Right. Yeah. So so the idea then is uh, that that's kind of like how it works in uh, in programming <laughs> too. You create a class. If one class inherits from another one, it shares some of the parents' traits. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Absolutely. Yep. That's inheritance done. You totally get it. That is awesome. <laughs> We're not really I inherited the internet. Yeah, I'm not actually going to explain how that works. <laughs> she has ten fingers. She's metric. Thanks, Will. <laughs> uh, so cool. Um, so the neat things that I would really suggest of of stuff. So if anyone is watching and following along and built this uh, homework stuff that you would that you would be interesting. Um, 
The uh, so if you wanted to actually make some changes to this on your own, any kind of uh, um, you know extra credit type stuff that people wanted to work on, if you got code to this point, roughly speaking yourself, maybe you were following along, and uh, I will try to push this out to my GitHub account for any of the people that actually know what that is. Um, but I have a feeling most of the beginner developers don't know what that is yet, and I haven't really talked about it on stream. The Oh man, the programmer jokes in my chat are are real. Anyway, uh, so the homework <laughs> man, that I was I would, going to suggest, I, I, would, I would just love to see all these jokes go down in yeah. the bar. Like everybody here right now, like I would like to see this be a conversation vocally. Like these jokes. Yeah, crimson <laughs> greens. So only only one zero people in this world. People who right, yeah, there. It's actually it should be there are only one zero type of people in this world. People who understand binary and people who don't. Dad jokes or um, dev jokes? What are better? <laughs> and uh, Smart Asky also did another one that's one of my favorites. There are two types of people in this world. Those who can extrapolate from incomplete data. Uh, so anyway, so the homework that I would suggest is make it so that your program, when you start it up, uh, is actually asking you for data on a loop and... Uh, then asks you at the end of it, do you want to continue? And if you say yes, then you can add another person each time. So essentially do this in a loop right here. So, whoops, I meant to not go down that far. I meant do this section all the way down to the append lines, put all that inside of a loop, and essentially make that adding data. So you can add new contacts and then say done, and then you got it. And then it'll read out the current contact list. We don't yet have a way of deleting them or anything like that, but I don't I don't actually expect people to use this as their contact list, but it kind of gets the point across of how you store data and uh, is kind of a, a fun exercise in that. So that is what I would suggest for homework for anyone that wants to uh, try something a little more challenging. You obviously do not have to do that before uh, our next episode. Uh, hopefully we don't wait another month before we do our next episode. Uh, we just need to make sure that Bubs and I get things scheduled so we can get this one going a little bit better. And um, my GitHub should be listed down below the stream, Skull Crusher for Life. Uh, if you can't find it down there, uh, yep, there we go. Someone will ask the bot to post it in as well. Um, and I have various other links if anyone wants to. Uh, Bubs, uh, I'm, I'm posting my link to my Discord. Do you want to post the link to your Discord? Sure, absolutely. It's going to be much more gamer related, I know. Yeah, but I mean, we have gamers in here. That's what I figured, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's a Twitch platform plus devs. There's got to be some gamers. Thanks, Crimson. There. And so uh, I people to mine as well right if, now. Uh, Crimson already got you, dude. Oh, dude, oh yeah, Crimson you can put. Just... Yeah. Yeah, so there you, you go. Absolutely. Yeah, there you go. Crimson's on the ball. And uh, if you want to see recordings of these videos, uh, you can find them on Twitch in the video section here on my stream or on Bubs' stream, depending on whose perspective you want to watch from. Uh, they're both quite fun. Um, and you can also follow us on Twitter. I will post my Twitter stuff here. Uh, Bubs is Mr. Bubs TV on Twitter. You can see that up there. Mine is Brandonius. It's right over here under me. And if you're on Bubs' stream, then I didn't do any pointing at all, and you have no idea what I'm talking about. But um, <laughs> we can post links in both as well. I don't know. Am I allowed to post links in Bubs' chat? I think you I'm are. About to, I'm about to find out. I think you are. Boom! Hey, you I are. did. Yes, you are. And I'll go ahead and post uh, <laughs> here as well. <laughs> that is true. But, uh, uh, Bubs, my my last guest on the stream, uh, definitely has you uh, oh, beat in terms you, I of can't beard post quality. Yours, man. That's not fair. Time out. Time out. Tell your story again, but I'll let you post in mine, man. <laughs> not kidding. Uh... Like a band. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we ban Mr. Bubs when he tries to post links in the chat, but I will just post the link. No, I don't have I don't have you whitelisted. Yeah, I don't have you whitelisted. I'll have to whitelist you. I thought I had you whitelisted. Also, I'm not sure if it'll... You, you said post it there, so I did. And that, yeah, and then and I, I tried... Punished. Yeah, and I tried to VIP you, and it won't let me VIP you. Oh, no, it actually did that time. Okay, cool. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Crimson. Yeah. <laughs> Type in the actual slash next time, though. Appreciate no, don't that. do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
hey, you should try the roulette game over here. <laughs> totally safe. Totally safe. Roulette game in my chat's totally safe. I like how the first time we did uh, an interactive game with guessing the number with the chat, and now we just named everything after, uh, or we added a contact list with Final Fantasy VII characters. I like that. I like making a correlation. Yeah. And making uh, it fun. Rigor mortis. Uh, we we made a uh, a simple little contact list thing in a uh, in a console application. Is what we were just working on there. Facebook simulator. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so simple little coding. So beginner level stuff. If you are interested in learning to code, feel free to watch the episode from the beginning. And uh, as I said, you can watch either on my stream or Bubs's, or I recommend both because that's more fun. Um, you know, you get in stereo then, like double double stereo. I don't know. <laughs> It's like mind melting. Yes. Thank you guys. Uh, no, thank, thank you, Will. Honestly, uh, thanks for being here, guys, and and being patient with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. You d you did well. L you. Lots of good. I'm, I'm picking it up. I think I I can definitely tell the difference between the first my first two classes, right? Like the second one, you know. Whereas the first one, you were telling me type this here, and I'm like, I kind of freeze. Like, now you can kind of just, it, it, it's more fluid. I understand what you're telling me. Yes, there's a good number of things that you're like, yeah, I get with that. I, I know what that is. GG, indeed, yeah. I do. And the more you hear it, like you said, pretty much with anything, right? Whether it's gaming or whatever your profession is or your hobby is, the more you do it and the more repetitive it becomes, yes. you kind of just pick up on it. it. It gets easier. It gets easier. Mm -hmm. the, the, the more times you do it. By so, that says you should totally make a chatbot game for streaming that is text-based RPG. You could even uh, sell it. So, uh, Binoculus, um, I actually did start a uh, a multi-user dimension style <laughs> game that is in my chatbot. Uh, that's actually sitting on its separate branch right now. And then we are also building a roguelike uh, that is designed to be a stream overlay game that you can play over on. Uh, currently, it's only on on my stream, but you, but in theory, like if I, you know, package it up and make it so Bubs could use it, Bubs could have a little roguelike game. So think like simple version of Diablo running in the bottom part of his screen while he plays other games. That would be really fun. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Will Bennett says you may now show me the secret coder handshake. What is it? Do oh, it on uh, camera. No, no, I can't do it on camera, guys. I can't do it on what camera. If we, what if I do? What if I be one guy that's doing the handshake? You be the other guy, and we just kind of do it towards our webcams. <laughs> That'd be weird. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I'll, I think I'll pass on that one, Bubs. Uh, oh, but I love on, how man, Crimson Green. Like send off. <laughs> I, I love I love Crimson Green's pointing out. It's like Bubs now knows the difference between parentheses and curly <laughs> braces. <laughs> I call them squiggly dudes. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it, it's it's like there's all these terms. Uh, yeah. So have, have you ever? So Bubs, do you know? So if I if I were to say um, if I were to describe a uh, if I were going to read symbols on a keyboard and I I told you one was called a bang, do you know what a bang is? Like in terms of a symbol on a keyboard? No. What is a bang? Uh, it's that's a that's a short way of saying exclamation point. <laughs> and I'm not I'm not kidding. So like yeah, see. But, but how does that where did that derive from like where how people needed that, to be able to speak this thing? thing computer people needed to be able to to read and speak symbols so we have short phrases that describe these characters so that you I can say them i think and i think by habit and i kind of obviously put two and two together because it wasn't a difficult one to figure out but by habit you kept saying parens right yeah 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 like and instead, of parentheses. Which, instead of parentheses yeah so a bang is an exclamation point because it's like you yeah. know like bang you know it's like loud no no yeah exclamation point yep bang that is actually it's like many many people use that it's a question mark uh, -huh. uh actually no so uh <laughs> that's awesome katrina that's i love it actually really but, fucking funny that was both a good dev joke and a dad joke so that's my favorite one. <laughs> actually i don't know i don't know if there is a i don't know if there is a short term for a question mark um but the funny thing is slightly faster one syllable slash you'll run into people that call them wax and back wax <laughs> instead of slash and backslash because it's can faster please, to say can we please use more of these i don't think i'd be able to keep a focused mind if we said wax and back wax <laughs> yeah exactly yeah see what, what crimson's typing uh, in there apparently it, it goes yeah exactly a splat yep splat, splat. wow 
Yeah, the uh, companion got short names and nicknames. Yeah, I see it. Wow. Yeah, because it's it's really hard to and and the problem is then programmers needed to like read out series of code like computer people needed to read this stuff mm -hmm. right, and it right. takes a long time to say exclamation point. It, it certainly not... does. Well, going back to the mechanic thing, right? Like the mechanic analogy when it when we came to uh, you know running a program like starting up your car. Let's see how <laughs> let's see what we did, right? Um, I feel like pass, passing tools also, right? Like mm -hmm. for the most part, they're, they're they're shorter names for it too, so it makes sense. If you're yep. just gonna speak that way all day, you don't want to, you know. <laughs> yeah, and it and it works as long as everybody else knows what you mean. All these little nicknames and stuff. Oh, see, look, awesome. yeah, yep. So you, guys pipes. A you guys have a language for your language. Yeah, That's awesome. The the pipe. Um, okay. the, these are pipes. I don't know if you can still see in uh, VS Code. So if I typed out, if I if I typed out uh, a crimson green, if I type this out, crimson green, lay down the <laughs> pipe. It would look like uh, with a ba lay down the, the pipe with a bang, right? Like <laughs> that's what it would look like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like smart, like smart ass just said. Bang, yeah, uh, don't exactly. don't 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 read that one there, smart asky. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I like this. I like this coding stuff. Yeah, you uh, do. I, I can't remember. Do do uh, smart Asky bubs? Do you guys do you guys know each other? Smart Asky's a know, gaming he's streamer. Familiar man, and I and I can't believe he went to TwitchCon. So I feel funny, like I funny thing is, he's a, he's a he's a he's a gaming streamer, but a programmer in his day job. Huh. So he's like, you know, weird. <laughs> no, I like I like smart Asky. I was watching a stream yesterday. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, see, he knows he's weird. Uh, so, cool stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mentioned homework for people to do. Uh, also, all this stuff, we can actually break all these things into methods and things like that that we didn't cover yet. Our code's kind of like, you know, uh, just all over the place right now. There's a lot of stuff we could simplify and make this easier and cleaner. Uh, but that gets right. complicated and takes a while when you're teaching someone. And I wanted to get us to the point where we could store it. And so you could see like, hey, I built a real thing. And it starts to get the idea that you can see some value out of it. Right? Mm -hmm. You can see like, yeah, this isn't exactly the case that you'd be doing. But there's some value in this. Um, you know what I think would be a really cool thing to do? I know we're a little pressed for time. Um, if, especially, uh, even more so for my chat that everybody's extremely mm -hmm. new to this. Is how how you would apply this, right? So, okay, this is cool. Like we made a contact list, right? Yep. If, if like in like two set, a brief, brief explanation of, of how a dev would use this, um, you know, in, in their daily life, whatever field they're in. So, so short answer here, um, mm -hmm. for someone that just wants to be a hobbyist programmer, um, something that I was planning on doing that would be kind of like this that I was originally planning on us working on but was going to be a little trickier, so I was going to delay that until the next one or the one after. Um, I was going to suggest that we make a little application that makes... Um, how to describe this? Uh, mm -hmm. When you upload a video to YouTube, say you're a Twitch streamer, and you record your content and you want to have a custom tile for your youtube video right probably you want to do those consistently and you don't want to go make a new one each time so what you're going to do is you're going to set up a basic background and choose all the bits that you want and put in your text and you want it basically auto generated because you're going to make one of those every single day right and you want it to be consistent so you can write a little program that will just create those tiles for you and like you could do it you know i could do it and uh, it would be pretty darn easy to just, you know, make it happen. Does that make sense? Yep. You write a little program, you just put in the, the essentially the name of the video that you want on the text, and it will just make it. Okay. So, yeah, that's the idea. So, cool stuff. Um... Anyway, uh, if anyone is uh, wanting to make sure that you catch our next episode, the best way to do that of our Learn to Code series, I should say, is to uh, check out this uh, event that I created for these streams. Uh, and I'm going to post the link over into Bubs' chat as well. I just posted it into mine. Um, they're the Learn to Code series. Uh, I originally did seven episodes of my Learn to Code series. You can actually find those on YouTube. 
But if you want to see the ones that are just me and Bubs, that's the new set on the bottom, and I started numbering again. And you can see these down here. There's Learn to Code in C Sharp Episode 1 uh, and Learn to Code in C Sharp Core Episode 2. And that's the one that is getting recorded, like, right now. This this video is, is being... Did you guys know this is being... Bubs, did you know I'm recording this? Yes. Uh, uh, we recorded the first one, and I, I watched it, uh, the playback on YouTube. Yeah, so anyway, so the cool part is... Um, you can uh, you can get reminders just of these series. So if you click this remind me thing, that doesn't follow me. That won't give me announcements of my regular ones. Uh, doesn't doesn't follow Bubs. You can follow us separately too, and we love you if you did. Uh, but you can actually just get reminders of that, and then when we go live with the next episode, uh, you'll just get a reminder that the next one is scheduled. So when we schedule these, you know you'll know about it. So that's the idea. Uh. Do, do, do. <laughs> so, uh, Binoculus asks, why C Sharp and not Java out of, out of curiosity? Oh, so um, Binoculus, there's a handful of reasons. Uh, so reason number one, and this is probably the best one, uh, I am primarily a C Sharp developer. Uh, so that that's reason number one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Smart asking, but, as a Java dev, because C Sharp is better. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I will tell you, I've used I've used both C Sharp and, and Java at different points uh, in my career. I like C Sharp better. Um, and to say that it, one language is better than another usually just comes down to preference. I like a lot of the things that are done in C Sharp, um, especially the new .NET Core C Sharp. It's fast, it's lightweight, it's easy. Uh, so one of the reasons is that it's really simple to, to get Bubs or anybody else running in C Sharp. Um, the SDK and everything like that are really lightweight, so... Uh, the install basically didn't take any time for, for Bubs to get set up and working. Uh, so those are some of the reasons. Um, that's uh, way more confusing to me, but that's with new buys. Do I have I have the same pair oh, of new boculars that you got on, man. So, Trust so me. Um, yeah, so the, the, the question of Java versus C Sharp, um, most people usually think uh, Java is actually uh, more confusing. We're just not using a lot of those structures. We didn't have a lot of if statements and things like that. Uh, but obviously we can do all of those in C Sharp and they work the same way. Uh, so they actually look almost the exact same. Uh, like method signatures are a little bit weirder in Java and you get some other things that are not quite as nice. Um, so that's essentially Java's got some artifacts of being an older language that it hasn't been able to get rid of. Um, mm. So it hasn't cleaned up as nicely. And uh, as Rambling Geek mentions over in my chat, uh, .NET Core is cross-platform, so even though I'm like 90% certain that Mr. Bubs is running on a Windows machine, and so am I, um, we wouldn't have to be. You could run this on a Mac or on a Linux machine, and in fact, you can actually run it in a web browser, uh, this same stuff. So there are some websites that have this same VS Code running in them, and you can do that as well. Um, so, yeah, that's 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 the whole deal. So, works out pretty well. Uh, anyway, if anyone's still in either of our chats, uh, feel free to give us a follow, uh, either or both of us, and uh, we would appreciate it. We will be back for more stuff. Uh, my next stream will be on... Uh, I should be here on Saturday. So, I will be Saturday at 1 p.m. And, Bubs, you should be streaming tomorrow. Tell people when you're streaming. I will be on tomorrow. I am an early morning streamer. Um, so uh, typically a lot of people are probably working if you're in the States or if you're on the West Coast, it's probably way too early for you. I typically stream from about 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday right now. Uh, that schedule is subject to change, but for, for now, that's when I stream. I do a lot of RPG type streams. So if you need a break from uh, from Brendan here, the dev chatter, um, <laughs> and, and you need a break from coding, want to hang out, play some play some video games with, with Bubs, uh, you're more than welcome to. Uh, right now, normally I do MMORPGs like World of Warcraft. Uh, it's kind of dead, <laughs> uh, so to speak. So we've been playing through Final Fantasy games. Uh, we just finished Final Fantasy VII, and uh, I'm going to continue tomorrow with Final Fantasy XII. Uh, we were going to do Tactics, but it's not running correctly. i got to fix that. So uh, we're going to do XII, the Zodiac Age. Um, if you're interested in that or anything else, really, come hang out, man. Play some video games with us and, and take a load off. Sounds good. Um... Yeah, uh, and then other than that, uh, I th I think we're we're about ready to wrap. I'm gonna click some buttons and spam some stuff into my chat. Links to various things. 
Uh, thank you for hanging out today, everybody. Uh, actually, I should go through my list of people that uh, followed oh, yes. things and thank them. Yes. And Let's I'll let do Bubs that. do the same. Mm -hmm. uh, so where did I leave off? Uh, I, I know I did that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, I got a bitty from... <laughs> I can't even pronounce your name, Sivart Nomra, which I apologize if I just butchered that. Uh, and uh, thank you for the follow as well. And Kuisa uh, Kuisa uh, Van Fox, thank you for that follow. Binoculus, thank you for the follow. Uh, Officer Jinxie and Rambling Geek, thank you for those follows as well. Much appreciated. Mr. Bubs, go do your thank yous. Yeah, absolutely. So we just got a handful here real quick. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Zabi92, thank you for the follow. Cyclops, I D Jute, and Smart Asky, thank you so much for the follow. And I noticed a couple of you have also followed on Twitter, so I appreciate that. Join our Discord, play some video games. Yep. Uh, if you don't know what Discord is, Discord is a chat application that's commonly used by gamers, Twitch streamers, uh, and people that do creative projects and other things like that. So you'll find a lot of that kind of thing. Uh, so it's good stuff. If you want to talk with other people that are interested in the same kinds of things you are, uh, feel free to check out those discords. There are a lot of good channels full of interesting people to talk with about games, uh, programming, and whatever else you are interested in. There's all kinds of cool stuff. So, awesome. Uh, we will let you all know when our next Learn to Code stream is, and uh, hopefully, as I said, it won't be like four weeks away like this one was. And we will see you all uh, at our next episodes, at Friday and Saturday, uh, Bubs and Brendan, respectively. Absolutely. Anything else you want to say there, Bubs? That's it. Thanks for having me, Brendan. I really appreciate it, man. This is fun. I, I, I honestly greatly enjoy this. Um, it's a good brain teaser. <laughs> yeah. I thank you guys again. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for being patient. Thanks for the, the support. And we'll see you guys next time. Yep. Later. Bye, guys. Happy coding, everyone.